everyone to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, September 30th at 7.15. I uh, just want to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Kevin cannot be with us tonight. He sends his regrets. If you are here for number eight, the discussion about Irving Street, uh, we intend to postpone that and will not be discussing it tonight. So just in case anyone is here waiting for that, you don't have to wait tonight. All right, uh, with that, we'll move to item number one, which is the consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting from September 9th. We have the request for the contractor and drain layer license for McCarty Associates. We have our, another drain layer license for M, I'm gonna mispronounce, Quilia of uh, Middleton, Mass. We have an approval for the iMobile from the Arlington Lions Club for October 26th. We have a request for a one-day beer and wine license for October 5th at the Robbins Library for the International Film Festival. We have a one-day beer and wine license uh, for October 18th at the Robbins Memorial uh, Town Hall for the third annual out, of, out on the Town Gala to support the AYCC. And we have an approval for a Kino agent on Mass Ave 152 uh, Dags Deli. Is there anyone who's here to discuss any of those consent items or wants to talk about any of the philanthropic activities in those? All right, do we have a motion? Yeah, I move to approve uh, subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. M Mrs. Mahan. One question on 1G. I'm assuming that when it says it's moving it from 148 to 152, it's still inside it DAGs, inside. but for some reason they yeah. have to. Right, they're just moving, I think, next to it. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Next up, item number two, introduction, newly appointed animal control officer, Amanda Kennedy. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amanda, if you wanna come up to that microphone right there. Uh, as you may know, uh, longtime animal control officer, Tom Quintel, retired recently but we were very lucky to find a very capable replacement. Amanda comes to us with a background working at both the MSPCA and the ASPCA. Uh, she's been on the job for just about a month now and we're very happy to have her, so I wanted to have an opportunity to introduce her to the board and let her tell you a little bit about herself and then give you an opportunity to ask any questions ever you may have. Welcome. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'll say the town of Arlington has been hugely welcoming. And um, I think that the form of government that you have in this town is amazing and it, it really makes for involved citizens. And so it's something that all of you should be proud of. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I have a strong background in working in animal welfare and um, bring, I do bring a lot of experience to the position. In general, animal control in our communities across the country, but also here in Massachusetts is experiencing some changes and some improvements and really becoming more at the forefront. Um, about a year ago, Governor Patrick signed in some new laws for animal control, which I know you guys have been through. Um, and you know we're, we're moving forward for that, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, animal control, uh, studies show that animal control officers actually have more interaction with the public than police officers. So um, how we interact with the public becomes really important. Definitely. Questions? Mr. Carroll? I just want to welcome Officer Kennedy. I had a chance to uh, bring my daughters by the booth on uh, town day and I appreciated your work and, and I, I like what you just said about the, the public because it was very clear when I walked away from the booth that you know animal control function is not just about enforcement, it's not just about animals, it's also about education, and about uh, people. And you, you were great with the kids and, and trying to just get them inculcated early with um, what it means to be responsible pet owners and such, and I think that, um, that, that uh, you know, I look forward to seeing more of those types of education efforts, because I think you know that, you know, like many communities, that those are some of the types of issues we struggle with, as well as working with owners. Yeah, I, I will just add, I did develop the Humane Education Program at the MSPCA, and I am looking forward to hopefully getting in the schools and, and doing some ongoing education. Fantastic, thank you. Mrs. Vaughn? Um, welcome to Arlington. I have to say you're in the top three positions of people that I got phone calls, emails, texts. Uh, when are we hiring? Who are we hiring? When is the new person going to be here? Um, and definitely you have been heralded throughout the town now that you're here. Uh, just two things. One, I think I know the answer to. Uh, the second, I don't know the answer to. The first question is um, regarding your view on increasing our dog licenses how you would do that and why you want to do that, oh as boy. well as I know you're well aware of Officer Hogan, Hoagie and Dusty, and I'm wondering is there any interface between you and your, your office 
and um, Officer Dosti and K-9 sure. Bogey. I mean, so, it's the other way around. <laughs> so the, um, the first question about licensing um, is actually a hot button topic for me. So statistics state for a town this size with this level of population that we have eight to 9,000 dogs. We have 1,700 licensed. That is actually a really low rate of licensing. So most towns don't have all their dogs licensed, but in Arlington, we should be higher than we are. Um, so I definitely think there's real importance in licensing. It is foremost for rabies control. That may not be the most important reason to do it, though. It's actually the fastest ticket home for a stray dog. Even with microchips, the dog license is still your fastest ticket home. Oftentimes, people don't update their information with the microchip company. And I think more importantly, from an animal control perspective, and also from a revenue perspective for the town, if I only have 1,700 dogs licensed, then I can only advocate for needing items for 1,700 dogs. And so from my perspective, I need those dogs licensed so that I can be better resourced and do things like go into the schools and do education. Um, so I, I definitely want to work on that. I'd love to see online licensing. And um, I've already talked with some people, and I know that that is technically a possibility in our system. And with the new website, we should be able to do that. Um, I think that's a huge barrier for people licensing their dogs um, in, in such a digital age. People don't want to have to come to town hall to hand a piece of paper to somebody. They should be able to scan their rabies and pay for it online. Um, in terms of uh, Dasty, very sweet dog. Um, <laughs> uh, he shed all over me the other day. <laughs> and my dog at home was very upset. Um, I'm, uh, my supervisor, my direct su supervisor is Captain Curran. And, and he is also the supervisor for Officer Hogan and Dasty. And um, I do hope to work with him more. I certainly want to connect with him on education pieces. Um, I don't know how much we'll actually have opportunities to work directly in terms of law enforcement. In fact, if there's animals present that I need to address, it would be better not to have Dasty there, so I, I'm not sure exactly how that will, will interface, but um, I look forward to doing education with him. Excellent. And I was just envisioning sort of piggybacking on Mr. Kiro's comments. I know um, Hoagie and Dasty go out to the schools, yeah. and I was thinking it would be a great opportunity to have both um, police officers, control oh, officers there. And it sounds like that's the direction you're moving in anyway, so I just wanted to raise it because I love the canine so much. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. I might need your support for that at some Thank point. You. but. <laughs> Um, tell me about your dog. I have two dogs. I actually, um, we have a four pet limit in our house. My husband put his foot down. We have four people and we can have four pets. All right. um, so I have two dogs. I have a pit bull who's a rescue dog and he's a canine good citizen. He's fabulous. And then I have a little Shih Tzu Yorkie who is also a rescue dog and she is a Tasmanian devil. Um, she starts fights everywhere she goes. So I have to carry her <laughs> under my arm. And we have a cat and a Russian tortoise that was found stray walking through Newton. Wow. So right. I have two boys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Arlington. We're very excited to have you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, one, I'm sorry. I left some magazines for you guys about animal sheltering just to give you a little peek into, you know, my world and what I, what I stand for. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next up, Memorandum of Understanding Battle Road Scenic Byway. Uh, the Road to Revolutions, uh, <clears throat> former selectman Clarissa Rowe. Clarissa, didn't we do this already? We did this already. Um, thank you, Dan. Uh, it turns out that one of the four towns, not us, wanted some changes at the last minute. The changes are in the new version that you have. They were minor. They were review reviewed by Mrs. Rice and town manager Adam Chapdelaine, and I'm here again asking for your approval of the memorandum. Um, they were very minor changes. They were things like who gets to decide whether the MAPC is going to be the fiscal agent or not. But they're, it's all basically the same thing that you already approved. So I'm asking for your approval again today. Move approval. Motion. Second. Second for discussion. Just, Ms. Rowe, you said the basic one that we should probably be highlighted looking at is the MAPC fu function. What was it before and what did well, the, another member tell us? Had, we had um, said that the MAPC was definitely going to be the fiscal agent. And the town of Lexington wanted to hold that decision until we were actually in operation and then we could make that decision. It depending a lot, the MAPC has been the entity that has moved this whole initiative along, but they've gotten grants to do so. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't cost us anything yet, mm -hmm. and hopefully it won't. But if they don't get a grant to do the next step, 
then they can't be the fiscal agent. So that's right. that's Thank the um, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, my only note is that one of the key things for me, which I was to, to double check, was that uh, any participating town or park may withdraw upon 60 days written notice to the committee, which means I, I think this is an absolutely wonderful thing, but the, it also yes, I, it's good to have the escape hatch, and we've got yeah. it, so let's, yeah. I'm totally in favor. Any further discussion? Mr. Well, I think I, I had mentioned this the last time that, that I'm, I'm glad to see that we're we're more closely aligned with Minuteman National Historical Park. Yeah. I can be naughty and say what happens when they get closed down tomorrow, but that's right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they'll be back. We've so, always uh, been really closely aligned. I mean, yeah. um, Lou Sedaris from that from the National Park has been part of every single conversation we've ever had. Yeah, so it's great. That's excellent. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Thank you for your work. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Four zero. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, next up, Verizon, uh, Bradley Road. Elizabeth Kelly? No. My name hi. is, hi, how are you? Could you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, my name is Ed Davis, and I'm representing Verizon's on this hearing. Originally, I think um, Betsy Kelly is the one that petitioned for this. Uh, she was either tied up with something, or I know last week she was sick, so she asked me to fill in for the meeting. Sure. So here I am uh, representing Verizons and hopefully I can answer all your questions. I did visit the site tonight before I came here to see what it looked like and what was going on there. So all right. I think so, I got a, I'm sorry, I apologize. I think, no, it's all right. I think I got a pretty good idea what's going on there. Okay. I wasn't involved in any initial approach, so. I apologize for interrupting. Don't. No uh, so I just want to note that the, the memo that we have here um, from Kurt Kelly, our, engin our senior engineer, says, since this portion of Bradley Road is a private way, we do not recommend issuing nor denying a grant of location. We do, however, recommend notifying the applicant, that's you, that their street opening permit application, which will be required for this work, should include an agreement between the applicant and the direct abutters to the work specifying the requirements for restoration of the road and work site upon completion of the project. I, I can say that all the abutters have been notified uh, they had a list. They have a list in the folder here. There's yeah. nine of them. Uh, I've got the receipts from all nine that were certified letters were sent to them. So you understand that this doesn't say tell them. This says agree with them. And <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Now whether they've contacted them, that was a question Betsy had. Mm -hmm. If this is a private way, why are we petitioning? Usually you petition a public way. That is an interesting in, question. In, in, and. I can't answer that question, but Betsy brought it to my attention. We both work for the electric company, and usually you don't, you don't petition. You deal with the abutters and so on to get that work done. So I'm going to invite the public, but do we have any questions before the public? Okay. Is there anyone here in the audience who wanted to talk about um, the work on Bradley Road? Come on up to, could you come on up to the microphone and introduce yourself? And Well, my, name is Ro <clears throat> my name is Robert Vartigian. and I'm, in, I'm at 38 Bradley Road across sure. from the... Uh... Sir, I'd invite you to address it to us, and oh, if it ends okay. up being a question for him, we'll be happy to pass okay, it back to him. that's fine. I'm Robert Vartigian at 38 Bradley Road. Welcome. Thank you. Um, first of all, I wanted to double check and make sure what you actually had in mind, whether you intend to do what's written verbally or what's uh, uh, diagrammed, because they're two different things. Can you tell me where the diagram and the words disagree? Because I confess I didn't notice that. Well, uh, in the uh, written word, it says, um, starting from the telephone pole, mm -hmm. which is in front of number 34. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, going. Uh, Easterly. Easterly, easterly would be going right across the street. It should say going northerly. I think what, I know what you have in mind, but it should say going northerly, first you of all. Yeah, that? could you please? Okay. Yeah. Uh, based you, on the diagram. Actually, could you, why don't we, I, you have to step back and forth, play your oh. tag with the microphone. Thank you. Based on the diagram I have, uh, North Arrow, uh, points towards number 34, that side. Uh, and so they're saying running in an easterly direction along the edge of the roadway and then turning and going, it would 
turn and go southerly. Now, if someone put the north arrow on the drawing incorrectly, then the correction in the language would be made. But it is along that, it is along the roadway of a 34 and 38, and when it gets opposite 39, then it crosses straight across to 39. That's the intent, and again, if the arrow is incorrect, we can correct that. Okay. So it reads properly. Thank you. North, north will be is in this direction. Okay. Pointed that way. Okay. We've been watching it for 50 you should, years. You should know better than years you. There, okay. so. you should know so better than Do you me. have another question or comment for us? Yes. Okay. Um, another question I have, sir, is um, if, you, if you dig, are you intending to dig where the um, yellow lines are the orange mar line, yes. marked across? Okay, that's where the Fios line would go in, right? Um, Come on up. I, I would say this. Again, if this is for fiber optics, yes, or is it uh, repairing the copper service? I don't know if they have a problem with that. That's they didn't tell me, but I'm looking at it based on what I think the age of the homes are. Whatever service goes to that house now is probably direct buried which is the reason they can't use the existing conduit if there were conduit there. Mm -hmm. But they are gonna put an inch and a quarter conduit, which is probably about this big around, <clears throat> from that pole, because I can see the telephone service dropping down into the ground. And they'll bury it maybe three feet in the ground, and they'll run the conduit across the street, then they're gonna put a handhole on the individual's private property. Okay. So they can do the splicing there and then run into the house. Okay. Do you have another comment, a question? I, I spoke to my neighbor who needs the new service. He needs the new service because the existing copper line apparently is worn out, but he's not really interested in getting files. He already has Comcast. What he needs is a, uh, a second telephone line with no static. Yeah. And so, it's, and so um, Verizon recommended a Fios line be put in but he's not interested in getting Fios. So I think, can, do you know, I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Um, I can answer what he's going to ask. Yeah. Do you know where the existing copper line is? Is it, is it where the um, red lines are painted sort of near the driveways? Um, the, the, the existing copper line, I don't know where it is. And I don't know that they, even look for that. Maybe the person wants the fiber optics. But the service probably comes off of that pole because there's no other poles. Now, it probably comes directly, a service directly off to each one of those homes underground. Verizons can find out where it is. They have a, a piece of equipment that goes over it and they can get the reading on it and find out where that coppice, that service is. But no, I don't think they look for all the neighbors, and they probably don't all run in the same direction in the same area. Okay. Would the existing copper line stay in the ground if a fiber optic yes. line were yeah. The answer to that is yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it, can we find out where the existing copper line sure, is? Sure, I can. I can, and I find can, out if there's a sir, conduit too. Yeah. Is, where, are, can you, I'm, are yeah. you trying? To, are you opposed to what's going on? Are you trying to stop it from happening, or are you just trying? Uh, no, can you I don't want to deny my neighbor yeah. any service. I just want to have the least amount of digging possible. Got it. So it because sounds it's, it is a private way, and we we're responsible for the yeah. condition of the street. We can't call up the town and say, "Here, we got a problem." So to fix it, it sounds to me like they can't. If, you, if, it, the, if this is old construction, they can't just run another line across next to it, and so they would, th that means they have to put in a conduit as opposed to whether it's going to put copper in it or they're going to put fias in it, they can't run it along the existing place because there's no pipe, there's just a wire. So if for this service to go in, you have to, they are going to have to cut the road it's from what everything I understand. But I, I'm, what the thing is is that because it is a private way, that means you get to work with them and they are responsible for the cut. And so what we're encouraging these, you and Verizon to do is have this conversation and come to an agreement because as a private way, as you just said, we're not the ones who are going to be regulating that. 
So I'm, I think I'm going to move Can on. Can we continue the discussion, you know, lay, outside? On our own? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, I absolutely. I mean, um, and beyond tonight. Uh, we're not, why don't we wait for the resolution, but I suspect we're not going to issue a yes or a no on this because it's not our decision to make. Um, Mrs. Mahan was first. Um, first, I'd like to move receipt of okay. this since we're not. Um, second. So. Um, second, I would ask through the chair, I'm not yep. sure if it's the chair or, or someone to my left, in terms of um, since this has come before us and normally it doesn't because it's a private way and there are recommendations that do involve the engineering yeah. department as well as um, for the sake of the pe <coughs> people on the private way as well as the sake of the town just to know what is the process protocol in terms of when a utility service comes onto a private way that they do they have to and or if they don't, is there a way they show the town through the town manager or the board of selectmen that they have met with majority, two thirds, whatever it is, private way owners, they've come up with this, everybody has signed off on it and everybody's okay. And I'm just wondering how it did get to us. So I, I believe through what Kurt Kelly has said on this document is that before the engineering division issues a street opening permit, they will, they'll want to see that agreement between the utility and the abutters making sure that the road is going to be restored to a satisfactory level of the abutters on that private way. So okay. our engineering department will receive from Verizon. Um, they can't open that. They can't open the road until they get a street the opening abutters, permit. All of the abutters, all nine, is a two-thirds, or you can tell me at a later date. Uh, it looks, it looks like date. it's direct abutters. It should be. A, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Mr. I just wanted to share and for the for the benefit of the, the, the resident here I mean I, I went through this I live on a private way we had another utility um, opened up the, the street all of the abutters in that case did sit down in somebody's living room my living room and <laughs> and met with with the representative of the utility and discussed the, the concerns and then we got it in, in writing and everybody signed up that was the process we followed to protect our rights and so I'd recommend that you, you might want to get your neighbors together in, in that way so how do we go about that okay so bar, barring an unexpected vote we're gonna we're about to move receipt which means we're not saying yes we're not saying no did you have any further questions for Verizon okay. is there anyone else here who wanted to speak about Bradley Road any final thoughts before we take a vote all right, we have a motion to move receipt from Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Kuro. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Four zero. All right, so definitely you all should sit down and keep talking. Because Thank you. And that's what I thought would happen. Okay. Not as a contractor. I'm a contractor, yeah. but having done this work for New England Power and Mass Electric for a number of years, we both looked at it and said, why, why are we? Petition? Yes. Well. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for understanding. Okay. And uh, please, if you want to exchange phone numbers outside, that might be a productive uh, thing to do. Thank you. Uh, next up, National Grid, Dennis Regan. Mr. Regan, I'm going to read the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Since the portion of Windmill Lane is a private way, we do not recommend issuing nor denying a grant of location. We do, however, recommend notifying the applicant that their street opening permit application, which will be required for this work, should include an agreement between the applicant and the direct abutters to the work specifying the requirements for restoration of the road and work site upon completion. So seeing how that last vote went, I suspect we're just going to move receipt on this. I, I just wanted to deliver my uh, certified mail receipts to the two that went to the immediate abutters. Yeah. And um, I, I can read the petition. I normally present it as a regular petition to you people, even if it's a private way, and I'll try to answer all questions. And I have additional maps with me if any of the abutters would like to take a look at uh, what, the, what the scope of the work is going to look like. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board before we go to the, any from, from the public who wants to talk about Windmill Lane? Do I have a motion? Move receipt. Move receipt and second. Uh, so I'm about to move receipt and invite and, and, and send you back on this one to talk to the to talk to the abutters uh, to actually get an agreement and bring that to the Department of Public Works. Okay, so bring the agreement to the Public Works when we get to get the street opening permit. Is right, that exactly. Yeah, but it, it's more than just sending a letter to the abutters. We have to make sure they're. Under, they get what's going on and they acknowledge. Uh, yeah. Sign up. You, you, no, I just so for my own information. Yep. The immediate about us is what the, what we normally what we normally do when we, on a regular petition. I think that, that'd be good. That, that, I that, think that'd that, be appropriate. The yeah. eight of them are yeah. listed. Okay. I think that'd be appropriate. So I, I can communicate through the selectman's office. Uh, um, I engineering. I think. Oh, right to the engineering. Yeah, right engineering. Yeah. 
the engineering to department for the for the permit uh, to open the street is from the DPW, the engineering team. All right. Uh, we have a motion. Is there? Uh, we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Four zero. Okay. Next up. Level three communications position, Chestnut Street and Medford Street. Welcome. Thank you. Can you introduce uh, yourself and tell us about the work? Yeah, I'm Mike Weimer from Level Three Communications. I'm the senior outside plan engineer for the New England area. We propose to install a conduit between some existing poles on uh, Medford Street and Chestnut Street, where there's not existing strand uh, between those poles. The spans are a little bit too long. So we'll be uh, installing conduit so that uh, we bridge the gap with conduit instead of uh, doing a new pole line. Questions from the board? This is Mahan. Um, first, move approval on subject to all the additional conditions that are listed from um, the DPW. Uh, the question Second. I have, no. thank you, Second I have question. through the chair is, um, I think you stayed in here, but I, I can't bring it to the front of my brain in terms of when you'll be doing this work. And my bigger question is, I know that particular area that I'm calling Thousand Islands, mm -hmm. that national grid is down there, and we have some traffic delays and, and the like. And I'm wondering if, A, your work also coincides in terms of timing with what National Grid is doing down there, just because that's a major thoroughfare for, I think, Route 60. Um, a, if you're aware of that, and we are aware of that, and B, how, if you, do, if you are down there at the same time, how are we coordinating that? And if we don't know that answer right now, if we can get that as a discussion and go from there, I don't know. Yeah, I, I actually wasn't aware of that work, but um, we would certainly coordinate with the other contractors working in the area uh, to try and make you know, as little impact to the public as possible. Could I ask yeah. maybe the town manager, just because Please. that's another additional, and I'm not saying that work shouldn't commence, but I really think it needs to be coordinated, and I'm hearing your willingness to do that. Yeah, the, the engineering division along with the traffic division of the police department will make sure that the work's coordinated. And if it is for some reason happening at the same time, that traffic uh, delays can be minimized, but hopefully it won't be scheduled at the same time, and we can sort of uh, do it periodically or sequentially so that they're not backing people up. I can also think of a specific business that's there that was going to that was really going to care if their road is ripped up right yep. there. Yeah. So if I were the gentleman at the microphone, um, who would I be contacting, coordinating? Wayne Schwinnard, town, uh, town engineer. Town, en town engineer. engineer. Yeah. Okay. So j just because there's a lot of work scheduled for going on down there, yeah. and that is a major thoroughfare cut through. Okay. So I just want you to be aware of that, so that your your work can proceed safely and as quickly as possible as well as for the town and sort of minimizing things. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Carroll? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, one of the recommended um, conditions from the, the uh, engineering department is that there be a 48-hour notice uh, given to abutters um, before the commencement activities. And I don't want to enshrine it and break with precedent as far as the conditions, but is it feasible to give a little bit extra notice? 48 hours isn't necessarily that. that yeah, I, I don't think that would be an issue. Yeah, yeah. How, how what, what kind of lead time do you typically? Uh, generally, we schedule these things a week in advance or so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a week's notice would be. If it's possible, I think that would be that would be helpful. In particular, I don't know if you realize there's a funeral home there, mm -hmm. and so they do their lineups right in front of there, and so that's going to be, you know, if the timing's bad, the timing will be bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, any, is there anyone from the public who wanted to talk about this work on Chestnut and Medford Street? Mrs. One thing, and if, if I could, when you speak with Wayne Shannad, um, through DPW, our town engineer, mm -hmm. or whoever the town manager deems appropriate, if you could, unless you can tell me right now, you don't anticipate a lot of when you're talking about storing equipment, stockpiling, um, staging. Um, I'm, I'm just want to get on the record that you'll, uh, do you anticipate you'll have a lot of that? Just because there's I already a couple of mini construction sites uh, down there. I, I understand what you're saying. I don't believe we'll have any uh, equipment being stored in the area or uh, spoils or anything of that nature. Um, we use the local vendors, so they'll bring everything back to their yards every night. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the petition, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up um, a request to repair a private way, Madison Avenue. Um, I don't actually know who the right person to start with on this one. Is it? So it would be the so petitioners. Yeah. So 
Who, she's the one that's dead. Sure. Sylvia. Sylvia? Could you come on up and introduce yourself and um, t walk us through what you want us to do? Uh, hi, my name is Silva McMillan and I live on the 144 Madison Ave. Um, we have had that uh, two family house since 1996 and uh, we've been trying to um, get all the uh, homeowners to come together and uh, repair the road. The road has been patched so many times by homeowners, whoever feels sorry about us and all that, and, and <laughs> that they, they try to patch it, but uh, um, it being a very temporary patch, it will come off, and uh, the road has gotten very bad recently. And um, we started uh, the petition about uh, two years ago, and finally, recently, we've gotten into uh, two-thirds of the uh, homeowners agree and um, uh, we want to start this project as soon as possible because um, the road being uphill, downhill, uphill, it's uh, very bad for the winter time. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, plowers are not able to do a good job. Their plows get stuck. Garbage trucks are getting stuck. Our tires are being blown up. I just recently to you. One year ago, I had to change my car tires. And uh, I don't see kids playing on the road. I don't see cars driving down the road. So this has affected the homeowners financially. And you know, uh, also, uh, we're not able to sell the houses. There are some of them, no buyers are coming in because of the bad road conditions. And uh, some of the homeowners are not able to uh, keep up with their uh, tenants. They, they, they just don't have any tenants come in because of the bad conditions. And uh, we would like to get the road repaired. So um, we have started with the help of Marie Kropelka. And uh, I think we have reached quite a point that we can do this. Uh, last year, we had contracted with uh, DNR Paving. And uh, however, there was a uh, ownership change in the DNR paving company, and the uh, new owner did not know uh, anything about our project. Mm -hmm. So by the time he found out in his computer, it was too late. So uh, we went with the uh, uh, aggregate company, and uh, they gave us the estimate, and uh, we have also the estimate on how much it's going to cost per lot, so. Okay, so just um, as general explanation for people in the board, I mean, for people in the audience, and um, also to double check that I'm getting this right. So, because I, I think this is the first time I've seen this since I was on the board. The town bylaws permit a private way to be repaved if two thirds of the people on the uh, property owners petition the board of selectmen, the board of selectmen agree that the need is met. And if uh, a third, once a third of the money is received in deposit, then the work may progress, and the rest of the money is put on um, the tax bills, essentially. So, and it can be spread out over five years. So, essentially, it is a way for um, a majority of people on a private way to force the road to be repaved, even if there isn't a unanimous opinion that it should be uh, approved. So. Um, that said, I was going to invite the public, but do we have any, Mr. Kiro? Well, I think there's another piece to this also, yes. though, that the upfront costs are expended out of the private way um, fund. 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 So I just wanted to double check that the, that the fund balance is sufficient to cover this if we're... Um, I believe there's still an existing appropriation, having there been nothing done of this sort in quite some time. Okay. Any, Mrs. Mahan? And, and just to sort of expound upon what you just said, yeah. when you said that the taxpayers um, bear the cost of this, it's the taxpayers on the private way um, mm -hmm. yes. that they agree to. And some, some of right. them, if not all of them, work out an arrangement with their tax bill through the treasurer. Um, so when you hear taxpayers, it's the fortunately, unfortunately the taxpayers of Madison Ave. Got it. Okay. okay. Uh, so is there anyone else who is here to discuss Madison Avenue? Come on up to the microphone. All right, could you, could, sir, could you please come up to the microphone and introduce? Actually, do you know what? The woman behind you got her hand up first. So I'm going to invite her up. But you can come on up and sit, just stand underneath the monitor. Uh, come on up and just stand up underneath the monitor, and uh, we'll get you up, uh, up next. Welcome. Could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Orange. I live at 35 Evergreen, which is at the corner of Evergreen and Madison. And um, so I'm not very 
up to snuff on any of what goes on with the street and everything, but my concerns would be, um, number one, when the work is going to be done to make sure it's either done before winter starts or after, because mm -hmm. I would be concerned that the work would be all for naught if winter comes and the road hasn't set. Yeah. Um, Could you hang on? Do you want to, can we do those one at a time maybe? Sure. Sylvia, do you know when, the, if this is approved now, do you know when the work will be done? When the work will be done? When will the road be rebuilt if this is approved at this meeting? Uh, as soon as you guys approve, all we have to do is uh, start collecting the first third of the whole uh, entire so cost. When, so the start date depends upon when you get the first third? Correct. Okay. Thank you. So I think the answer to your question is we don't know yet when it will start, but I, I'm sure everyone agrees that it would be better to be sooner than later. Okay, and then the other concern that I have is, um, and we talked a little bit about it outside, but to make sure that the work is done at a quality level because, as she said, it, the road has been patched and, and somewhat paved by, you know, we've had uh, com people who've owned companies before in the neighborhood and they've done a somewhat decent job in paving. I've been there since 1990. and. The problem is, is that once winter hits and the plows come, the plows, no matter how good of a job they've done paving, the plows tear it up. And so we have an issue with the plows tearing it and then also with the water coming down the hill, the water goes into my yard and it also goes into my brother-in-law's yard. He's not on Madison, but he's on the other side of Evergreen. So he's right at the bottom of the hill. The water goes right into his yard. So those are our concerns. In, on the end of the street. Thank you. Uh, I was, yeah, you go for it quickly. Um, when aggregate company came up, he, they uh, assessed the street, how far it goes down exactly, which houses are gonna be affected by the water draining, and they're gonna be building an edge to those uh, who are gonna be affected. So the water drainage will go down the street, not to the people's yards, houses, or uh, so that's exactly why yeah. it's going to be costing sixty-six thousand something. Okay. So that's that's all in consideration. Thank you. All right. Uh, Next. Mr. Jose Monroy, one forty-eight Madison Avenue. Very happy what is going on in the neighborhood. Everything is changing so fast. I've been living there for almost 12, 14 years, and. Um, we're excited because even the fire department get stuck in that street. So, and our emergency car cannot get inside because in winter, impossible. Mm. So only what we need is your support. Please help us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ma All right, you, why don't you can come up together, it's yeah, okay. We live at 145 Madison come, come Avenue. On, come on up to the mic and introduce yourselves, thank I'm you. I'm Michelle Sullivan, yep. I live at 145 Madison Ave, and I'm Patricia Sullivan, and I live upstairs from her. Welcome. Thank you. We've been in the house since 1970. Um, Mike, I was wondering if, I was under the impression the town paid for half of the road? No. No? Wasn't this one? Barrel, no. Yeah. All right, and were we allowed to use your company, the town company, and get a discount? Um, no, there, yeah, uh, is there any, Tom, Mr. Chaplain, no, is there any no. repurchase? Yeah, unfortunately, this is something you've, as, as the private way, you guys need to negotiate the, the deal yourself, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, that's what I was curious about. And how long would the work take? I'm, I'm going to defer that to your contractor. We're not, to, we're not the right people to answer that for right. you. I'm just here in support of it. It's probably long overdue. Um, it was semi-repaired by the town when there were some pipe repairs. But either end of it um, is very, very terrible. It's, um, um, what can I say? This is long overdue, so I'm, okay. I'm here for support. Okay. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Uh, Brian McCaffrey. <coughs> I represent the owners for um, 128 and uh, 130 Madison, and also 153 and 155 Madison. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to speak in support of it tonight. Oh, thank you. Was there anyone else who wanted to speak on this? Mrs. Mahan? I'd like, I'd like to move approval and just um, on the issue that was raised by one of the speakers at the microphone. I know when, and it's been cited that previously different people have done patchwork um, and then the snowplow trucks come by. Um, the reason why, unfortunately, the road sometimes does get eaten up is because it's not an even surface. It's because we do, 
you all do have the patchwork. We see this down Regis Road and University Ave. We do the patchwork, then the winter comes, we get the snow, then we get a freeze, and that kind of raises everything that's been patched. Everything that's paved is on one level and the patch kind of rises, and that's why when the snow plow trucks come through, whether it's a snow fighter, someone correct me if I'm wrong, or one of the smaller vehicles. Um, so in answer to, um, and I think that's correct, Adam? Yeah, generally, yes, absolutely. So what I'm seeing is when this street gets paved over completely and everything's even, that hopefully you will not see um, that kind of damage after the snow plows go down. And I'm gonna leave it to Sylvia and the rest of the neighbors. You all have contracted with aggregate that you have some sort of caveat in there that whatever they install, it is even. We cited the drainage issues, but also I think that will solve that problem that once the snow plows come through, my gosh, you know, it's a different road. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll um, second. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Do you want to yeah. say it? So um, there will be a, one other final action before the, the construction can start, and that's the board adopting a formal betterment order per the bylaw, and that's what basically cements all of the abutters on the private way to pay their portion share and then allow engineering to place that as a lien on the property. Uh, so the board can move forward with ap approving in concept, and then we can have a formal betterment order prepared and brought before the board at the okay. meeting next Monday. That's good to know. Thank you. I did not know that. Uh, sh sure. Was it about that very specific thing? Sure. I'm going to come back for another. Th uh, let me finish up here. Sorry. We, we, one at a time. Uh, do we have a second? Um, second. Yeah. Um, I second in as well. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and now that I just found out that they'll <clears throat> be coming back to us, I do think that we should look into the timing of when they do come back. So if it is in the middle of December, then perhaps we can make it conditional on starting in the spring or you know or whether it's even at the end of November and it's approaching winter that we don't they don't get underway with the project and then to kind of appease everyone in a little bit of a compromise but on um, that is something we can take up and then when they come back Stephen can I just interrupt for a second mm -hmm. when I spoke to the gentleman Doug he said that if I collect the money and have it and hopefully within two weeks from everyone they could start right away before November 1st to have it finished before the winter sets in so then if they pay me the third down, they can start. And then anyone that wants to pay before December 31st, the balance, you will not go as a lien. But if it's still open January 1st, then you would have to put it on okay. the bed. But okay. that's what the last I spoke to the contractor. His plans was as soon as we get the money, the third down, <coughs> and give them the go-ahead, they'll start. No. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Mr. Carroll? No, I have nothing. Okay. More. Um, I just had two comments. Um, one is I just wanted, we were talking about the stormwater briefly earlier, and I just want to point out number seven. The street does not have a stormwater collection system. Owners should be aware of any grading runoff problems that could be encountered or caused by this work. So yes, putting an edge makes the water run down the yards, but that water ends up somewhere. And so people just have to understand, like, this, there is no stormwater collection that's on, on this road. And uh, so now, having gone through this, now, did you have a, do you want to come on up to ask another question? That, that she answered my first question, okay. but the other question that, that I was going to point out is that even with these edges, that water's going to end up on Summer Street because right now, even in the best of storms, right now it ends up at the end of Evergreen on Summer Street, and you have a big puddle. By paving the road, yes, that road's going to be beautiful, but we're going to have a huge, big water issue at the end of Evergreen and onto Summer Street. So. Uh, I did t take a drive down the road today, and I thought it was a well-named collection of potholes. <laughs> and, and just just briefly to that point, I do want to say, I think it was October 96, uh, we had that big, huge storm, and Thesda and Summer Street and Wright and Dotham and all that flooded like crazy. And one of the things that a lot of the neighbors up there, friends of Thesda neighborhoods, did was work with the town. Um, I know the Caggianos live right there, the DiNapoli's on Summer Street, and, and Mike Malone, who's right on the corner of Evergreen and Summer. And what the town did back in, if it was 96, we did it in 97. If it was 97, we did it in 98. I want to say the flood of October 96 helped redesign the, um, Summer Street by putting in higher curbs, by installing some more stormwater drain runoffs for that very reason, God bless you, as well as we had water coming down from Winchester. So. I, th I think and I hope and I anticipate, because um, we also anticipated future um, 
water runoffs that we have prepared for that. Um, and if we haven't, we'll have to go ahead in the future. So hopefully the concern you raise is a valid one, and I'm thinking that we have the infrastructure from that 96, God bless you, 97 event um, that that will be mitigated. If not, we'll go forward from there. Any further discussion from the board? Nope. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, motion by Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0. Okay. Um, so we'll go forward, and but we still have to come back and do, formal the, do the formal betterment order, but we'll do it. Okay, that is the end of um, we're talking about number seven, Madison Avenue, number eight, Move to Irving table. Street. Um, Second. We, can, uh, we have a motion to table. Uh, it is tentatively scheduled for November 4th, but I keep an eye out for future agendas to see what exact date that is. All those in favor of tabling, please say aye. 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 That is four zero. Number nine, appointment to the culture, Arlington Cultural Council, Elizabeth Taylor. Welcome. Could you tell us a little bit, thank you for volunteering, thank you for helping us out on the Cultural Council. Could you tell us a little bit about why uh, this is interesting to you? It's interesting to me because my whole life and my career has been dedicated to the arts as healing practice. I was trained in opera, theater, and dance, and I have a small sole proprietorship that um, presents young people usually in concert to give them the experience of performing. Uh, to get their careers up and running because I didn't have that opportunity when I graduated several decades ago. Um, so it's very interesting to me to use all my skills and my training uh, to improve the town of Arlington's arts, there, of which there are a great deal. So I'm very interested in helping that along. Thank you. We have a motion. Question. Move approval? Second. Mrs. Mahan? And I just say I'm really excited that you're joining Arlington in this way, just going through your resume curriculum vitae. I see you have quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's with the Boston Museum or Boston Baroque, but in terms of grant writing and identifying grants as well as writing them and obtaining them, right. I think that's a great addition along with you know some other people that also have that skill, but I think the more eyes and more familiarity with that, um, so I'm really excited about that facet of it. I'm sure there's probably five or six other areas that I have no idea about <laughs> that you're bringing to the table, but I really want to thank you, and this is a, um, a commission committee um, Mr. Cure also interacts with um, often and has really gotten sort of a rejuvenation um, within the past year or two, um, including your addition to it. So thank you so much for Terrific. agreeing to do this and volunteer um, your expertise. I appreciate it. Another thing that I'm very interested in is making uh, connections between the cultural events and organizations. In the past, they've tried to do that and it hasn't gotten very far. So I'm hoping that with the corridor um, project, we will also be able to move forward in that direction. I think that's really important. Fantastic. That's great. All right. Uh, th thank you very much for your volunteer. We're w delighted to have you aboard. All thank those you. in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, appointment to the Arlington Preservation Fund, Diane Schaefer. Welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Um, I'm Diane Schaefer. I've been on the Historical Commission since I believe it was 2006, and I was an associate on the commission before that, just because I've always been really interested in historic buildings, and we renovated a big house here a number of years ago. And I wish then that there had been a preservation loan fund because mm -hmm. we had to sort of figure it out by ourselves. And um, I think it's really exciting that this money is there for people, I mean, it's not for renovating your house, but to, for restoring certain historic features about your house that a lot of people probably wouldn't do if they weren't encouraged or had a way of, to get money for. And I'm a real estate agent, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? I, I move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Mrs. Mahan. And I just want to say to Ms. Schaefer, Diane, um, I really appreciate you seem to have an awful lot of design, photo ed, and photography experience. Um, yes. Besides your regular nine to five or yeah. <laughs> 12 to nine, whatever job. Well, those are previous careers. Now it's right. real estate as a buyer's agent. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a nice facet that you have, a sort of niche that you've, you've grooved out. And I'd be interested to see um, your service on the preservation fund, perhaps if somehow that can be tied in. Where we're getting so you know, quick hands-on, I know, you know, in terms of the Sims development 360, they're yeah. going to have, you can go through the community park areas and you can 
use your iPhone and tag onto something to get something back. So I don't. I just saw all that photography and photo ed experience, and I really encourage you, and I know you will, whatever you can bring from that of your expertise to this committee um, commission would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Four zero. Thank you very much. Welcome. Next up, we have a request for a food vendor license. Kevin Foreman, Senior Blind Man Management, Inc., doing business as The Right Spot, 1389 Mass Ave, which is, of course, the uh, MBTA um, bus stop up across from what used to be Panera. Welcome. Welcome back at you. Can you tell me a little bit about your application and what you're doing up there? Um, I began three and a half years ago where I um, approached <clears throat> as an independent business person to the MBTA under what we uh, a flagship program with the Mass Commission for the Blind mm -hmm. that I drew up called the Small Business Enterprise Program to uh, bring more independence uh, and opportunities to the blind and the disabled community <clears throat> to become business people. Uh, it took me three and a half years. The MBTA right off gave me a 10-year lease on the place um, on the grounds that they could have all the thunder, that I didn't need any of it, but uh, they were helping the blind veteran get into business. Um, we opened August 5th. I'm very excited about it. Um, I'll be the first independent uh, full-purpose uh, MBTA Charlie Card agent, be able to do all the bus fares, train fares right here in Arlington. You haven't had that. Mm. Um, I have the lottery. Um, we serve <laughs> New England coffee. Everything's filtered, everything's clean. You can eat off the floors of my store. I run it like a marine barracks because I'm a former uh, senior marine drill instructor. And um, I bring a lot to the table. I'm looking forward to being a part of your town. I came to Massachusetts to learn how to be an independent blind person. And what I learned was is that there's a lot of areas that we could improve on uh, in helping the disabled. I've always been a leader. I'm Special K, the world kickboxing champion, and a Hall of Famer. So I, I bring a lot to the table, and I have friends. Mad. Yeah. <laughs> but that uh, wasn't on the food application. <laughs> the look is because I have fans, and I'm growing old with my fans, okay? And they do see me. Um, I'm, a little, I'm normally not nervous when I do public speaking because I was with Special K for so long, but since I've lost my sight, I only have right peripheral vision, um, this is new to me again. But um, I've had to learn how to talk and walk and many things to just be able to come in front of you wonderful people and be a part of this town. The support's been fantastic. Um, my door's open. I do volunteer work. I'm looking forward to being a good part of your community. And uh, thank you for letting me come, man. All right. Thank you. <laughs> your bus station is open. <laughs> Here you go. Do we have a motion, Mr. Yeah. Byrne? I'll uh, move approval. And, uh, and I'll second. Yeah. And that, no, thank you for uh, being here. And it's uh, great to see the bus station with something in it, um, yeah. you know, being functional. And this is excellent. I'm very impressed by you and your background. And uh, I look forward to you being a part of this community. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, Mr. Carroll. Mm -hmm. I, I likewise want to thank you. And I, I think it's a great partnership. I'm, I'm glad that we can kind of partner with the, the T and the Mass Commission for Blind and that. that uh, with your energy, and I want to thank you for your service as well. Well, you know, we have a law called the Randolph Shepard Act. Many of you probably don't know what that is, but when you become blind, you understand what it is. It was written for the World War II veterans that came back blinded by the sulfur bombs. There were so many of them. And Randolph and Shepard were two senators. They formed the law that stated that any state and federal property entity which had retail space available must first offer it to a qualified blind person. The law has been pushed aside and pushed aside and pushed aside because people don't like to give up properties. Um, but, but I'm hoping what I'm proving here is that um, given, given the right person, you know, they should abide by the law. And, and they shouldn't give properties to people who are just going to take them and fail. This is not a failure. This is going to be a great success. But um, I do believe that, that the law should be invoked. And that's basically what I've done here is I've just went to the MBTA, used the Mass Commission for the Blind, and brought those two agencies, which are like oil and water, <laughs> to come together on this. So it's, it's, there's a whole lot of things that happen here. They have very little to do with me and my little store. But, but um, the things I'm doing in that store, there's a, there's a POS system in there that I've developed. And you should come down and see it, because 
it's allowing a completely blind person to manage a business. And it's the only one in the world. Hmm. All right. So there's a lot of things happening in this little store that were way more important than the fact that Kevin got a store. Okay. So once again, thank you for letting me come to your wonderful town. I'm thank looking you. forward to being a great part of it. So. I think we've got one more question for you. Yes. Um, Ms. Amon. A comment and a question. Uh, first, I definitely am familiar with that law of my family, um, siblings, parent, grandparent, retinitis pigmentosa. Grew up on perking talking books, uh, coming every week and listening to them myself, as sure. well as also working with special needs, severely autistic kids. Um, I do know Arlington through their collaborative sends severely autistic kids to the Perkins School for the Blind because it's a similar kind of training when you train a severely autistic child, young adult, as you do someone who is sight impaired or completely blind. Um, so I, I'm definitely familiar with a lot of what you say, what you do. Um, thank you so much for your service. I made the mistake two years into my marriage introducing my husband as an ex-Marine to another Marine. I learned my lesson. It's former Marine. She's former. It is, Semper Fi. And, and one of the things I think you had in your application is that you will be or you are selling um, products that are constructed, delivered by local disabled. Um, if you come citizens. in the store, the first thing you see to the left is our craft corner. I built, I built a glass case with shelves in it. I now have five different people from local areas. They're handcrafting jewelry and bird houses and you know I'm promoting that type mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of activity for sure um, the mass commission and the uh, Department of Health and Human Services are going to pick up the ball there'll be a lot more educative literature at the store so people can come my website is now being redeveloped from the special cake cereal website to blind man management website which will be a clearinghouse for people should you need a need for special needs in your family, someone becomes blind or disabled or whatever, I want them to think of, you know, what about, call that blind man, call that blind man, okay? And, and we'll have the literature on our website up to help educate people on actually how to deal with these problems and, the, and direct them in the right path. Because it was difficult for me when I came here too, uh, to find the right path, there was a lot of, and when you can't see, obviously you have to count on other people, you know, so, um, in, in, in those areas, I'm, I'm trying to be as good as I can mm -hmm. to try and help as many people, you know, to find the way to, to find the, the agencies that they need to find and get those agencies to perform. That's another thing, too. I mean, without leadership leading, the agencies don't have to perform, all right? The, the Mass Commission for Blind has performed, and the MBTA has performed in this. They've had to because I'm a profile person, and I understand that. Had I not lost my sight, I wouldn't know how to deal with a blind person either. Mm. But uh, I know how, mm -hmm. okay, and I know how to lead. And, and thank you for the opportunity, which I know we're gonna avail ourselves of. I, I, I'm familiar with POS point of sale systems through family, through restaurant businesses, but I'm really excited to come up and I'll call first and see how you've adapted that, just for my f family connection to that. Thank there you. There you go. Thank you for choosing Arlington. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, four zero. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Thank you. You too. Next up, we have a transfer of a common victory license. Emily Shea and Mark Ostow, if I pronounced that correctly, Blue October, doing business as Kickstand Cafe, the former Jam and Java. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hey, how are you? I'm Emily. This is Mark. Hi. Hi. Tell us about your application. Uh, our application is to move into the space currently occupied by Jam and Java and uh, continue operating as a cafe, make some changes. Mark currently owns a little cafe in Porter Square that's located in the Porter Square bookstore called Cafe Zing. And we will have lots of similar things to that. It also adds some more food options. Principally, uh, well, the main changes we're going to make is to kind of change the coffee service. At Jam and Java right now, it's sort of uh, just simple brewed coffee. We'll bring in an espresso machine and up the coffee game a little bit. And a little redecorating, try to make it a quick transfer. We have to close down for a little while just to take care of some of the changes the Board of Health wants. <coughs> Do a little painting. Okay. Uh, motion question? Mr. Carroll. Well, for, first I'll move to approve. I'll second. Subject to all conditions. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, th thank you very much. Thank you for com coming in. I, I enjoyed reading your application. I I um, 
But I, I shared this with my wife, and she was very excited that your spring rolls are coming to Arlington, <laughs> oh. I have to say. Um, <laughs> we'll take advance big, orders tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Speak, Finn, I'm also excited that you're going to change the signs in the parking lot and update them to the, to the new mm -hmm. store name. Um, I was wondering, um, is it your intention to keep, I'm sure you know that Joe Burns runs the, the open mic um, yes. series that, that does get funding from the Arlington Cultural I haven't, Council. I haven't spoken to him, but it's our intention to it's keep that going as long as going. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's to. great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking <clears throat> this over and keep keeping it going and um, inserting some new you know, creativity in it. It's one of my choice spots when I have to have an impromptu <laughs> Excellent. meeting. We'll be looking session. for you. <laughs> Ms. Mon? Um, did Mr. Burns second that? I, just I did, yes. yes. Did. Thank you. Um, just two or three things. First, I want to disclose that a uh, question came up on the Arlington list. I'm not sure if you're on that in terms of what this business was. And I tried to, the best way I could, encapsulate the application before me, uh -huh. saying coffees all the way to Vietnamese spring rolls. I don't know if you saw that. I did. I, I've been a member of the list for years. Okay. So I like I, to stay back, though. Right. No. <laughs> and I try to, it's hard, you know. I'm not representing your business, so I just wanted to let you know in case you weren't aware of that. And if I took any, did that very well. Yes, I did. Oh, thank you very much. Um, the second thing is uh, a question uh, through the chair, um, and then a question through the chair to you directly. The first one is, um, I know we're in the middle of town council search, and just by going in my sort of mental checklist on an applicant like this, do we have to have Corey or Sorry? If we do, um, can we just get that taken care of? Sometimes when we see these applications, and I know we got something from the police that says pending Corey and Sorry checks. Yeah. Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. It's only alcohol. Okay. So there's no Corey, no Sorry. Okay. And then um, the second question or comment that I would have is, I saw in the application, and if I read it incorrectly, I apologize. But one of the features amenities that I think you're proposing that you would like to do, I'm not committing you to this, is that you really wanted to tie into the Minuteman bikeway and install some bike racks. And I guess my question would be through the chair, would it be advantageous? Would it be something that we suggest that um, these business owners um, avail themselves of TAC in terms of installing some sort of bike rack? How do we handle that? So there's actually a, pre there's a presentation that will be before the board at next Monday's meeting, uh, specifically in regards to the layout and the connection of the two bikeways as part of the larger bikeway connection project that TAC and DPW have been working on for some time. So staying in touch with uh, actually the planning department and or mm -hmm. the director of public works will be able to talk about what possibilities are, are, are there for bike accommodations. Yeah, I've seen the plan as it stands now, and it does say that there'll be some additional bike racks in that little plaza area in front, and in any case, we're planning to use maybe one of our parking spots to just install bike racks. Great. I just want to make sure you're all sort of in concert with oh, each other. Important to us. Everyone getting, I'm yeah. not saying, I'm requiring you to do that, I'm just saying something. I just want to make sure everything's coordinated. We're even going to give like a little discount to people with our sticker on their helmet, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Other comments, Mr. Byrne? Yeah, um, no questions, just a couple comments. Um, taking over quite a popular spot, as you know, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a very cozy. I didn't think it could get better, but looks like you've taken steps to make it better. Um, the first place I met Selectman Kiro actually was at <laughs> Jam and Drive, so it brings back some memories. Right. But um, no, thank you very much for your willingness to do this. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I just had, so I was curious, what, how long are you gonna close and what are the changes you need to make? Well, the, the Board of Health gave us a list of about 30 mostly small items, just some patching of plaster, some removal of some old vents, some ceiling tile replacements. And then we have a little bit of plumbing work that I'll obviously be in touch with the plumbing inspector around to get this new espresso machine put in. Oh, okay. Um, painting, a little bit of reconfiguring of the seating area, yeah. so we're hoping two weeks maximum. Okay. Um, I will say my only other comment about the decoration is that the tables are, you can move them around pretty easy in the current configuration, and they have low hanging glass lamps. Uh -huh. I'm six foot one, uh -huh. figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, I've hit them, but I actually saw one guy break one of them with his head. Oh, you may. The Duly blue noted. glass, you yeah. know, like they're very pretty, but they're, yeah. Oh, they're scary. Low hanging. <laughs> they're low hanging, exactly. Um, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So much. Best of success. Thank, Thank you. you.
Next up is the Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there anyone here who's here for the Citizens Open Forum? Come on up. Welcome, what do you have for us tonight? Good evening, my name is Judith Phelps, 77 Oakland Avenue, town meeting member, precinct 16, and a member of Park Avenue Congregational Church. Tonight I have given to Marie several copies of a petition requesting handicap and or limited parking near Park Avenue Congregational Church on both Wollaston Avenue and Paul Revere Road adjacent to the church. A request is being made of the selectmen of the town of Arlington set an order enforcement of a two hour parking ban on Wollaston Avenue in front of the church property and on the westerly side of Paul Revere Road from Park Ave to a distance of 200 feet from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays only and to provide for handicapped parking in front of the door of the sanctuary and also in front of the door to the parish hall on Paul Revere Road. Parishioners attending meetings at the church are finding it difficult to park in the area of the church. While two, a two hour limit does apply on Park Avenue, it's only good for about two to three cars and it is not being enforced and no such limit exists on Wollaston or Paul Revere Road. And we've noticed that cars are presently parking there all day while their drivers hop the MBTA and go into Boston for the day. Many of our members and friends who need to go to the church have physical disabilities. Some require wheelchairs, walkers, canes, you name it. It's very difficult for many of them to walk even seemingly short distances. Park Avenue Church is in the process of making our church handicapped accessible. We have just put in over $350,000 to make it accessible. In addition to, um, we are, are adding ramps, we're adding a lift and a railing, extending around the corner of Park Avenue where their streets slant so much that people cannot even walk around there without falling. In addition, Park Avenue also serves as the home to a place to grow childcare and numerous other civic groups use our church on a weekly basis. It's also the home to Precinct 20 voting. With parking being usurped all day by parkers who are going into Boston, the users are finding themselves parking across Park Avenue from the church and then crossing a very busy and very wide section of the road. And for the daycare parents, you see them in the morning crossing with a, a bag and a lunch a baby in one arm, and a toddler being held in the other arm, and trying to dodge cars flying up Park Avenue in a hurry to get wherever they are going. For these reasons, we are asking for the designation of a handicapped parking space near the church's main entrance on Wollaston and near the door of the parish hall on Paul Revere Road, as well as two hour limited for 200 feet on the westerly side of Paul Revere Avenue from 6 to 6 p.m., 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays, and in front of the church property on Wollaston Avenue. We also feel that it would be nice to have a designated drop-off loan on Paul Revere Avenue as a benefit for the parents trying to get their children in and out of the daycare, as well as drivers trying to get our handicapped people in and out of the church. Um, the petition Marie has and will be giving to you, and we're hoping that you will grant our request as it would make it very, very convenient for our members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Would it be appropriate to refer that to the parking subcommittee or? You want to um, make a motion to move receipt and refer to TAC? Or TAC or, or parking? Parking, parking subcommittee. Okay, move receipt, Is that move receipt and yeah. to refer to parking. Sorry. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, so the parking subcommittee will schedule a meeting and uh, take a look at the request and we'll have, I'm sure Officer Rateau, who is the regular, is the member of that committee, among others, will weigh in. So we'll definitely, uh, th that subgroup will look at it, make a recommendation and come back to the full board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who's here for the Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none. Next up, traffic rules and orders, other business. Presentation, Mass Ave. Bike Accommodation Striping Plan. <coughs> Mr. Rademacher. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, it was probably about this time, about this time last year when we had paved a, a decent stretch of Mass Ave and we had all that nice black canvas there and uh, discussion started to happen, started to take place on 
how could we stripe that section better or could we include uh, bicycle lanes or some kind of accommodations. And at the time I felt we would probably be better um, served if we looked at Mass Ave more as a whole rather than in segments. So uh, we, we did not stripe that section uh, for bike accommodations, but instead we spent the winter, the engineering department as well as members of, uh, some of the members of TAC and some of the members of the Arlington um, Bicycle Advisory Committee got together and worked on a, um, a guideline for not just Mass Ave, but many of the major routes in town as we, we rework them, some guidelines we could apply if uh, bicycle accommodations uh, made sense or should, or should be accommodated. So that uh, took place over the winter and in the spring the engineering department went out and took measurements across Mass Ave from the Lexington town line to Mass uh, to uh, Mill and Jason Street. Took uh, measurements about every hundred feet or fifty feet across so we could determine how we could apply these guidelines. And, um, and what you have before you is basically a schematic of where we decided or what the guidelines show we could put uh, either true bike lanes or paint uh, what's called a sharrow. I think the, f the board is familiar with the sharrow, um, but just in case I have. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, this is actually uh, one page out of the, the draft guidelines that we have. There's still a little work to finalize them, but in general, this gives you an indication on the lower portion of the page over on the right-hand side is a, a shadow bicycle symbol with uh, kind of like the sergeant stripes on top that indicate a lane is to be shared with cyclists. And then uh, there, there are some stretches of Mass Ave where we had room to actually place a, a, a full bike lane without uh, taking away from the, the single lane of traffic that exists. I can quickly run uh, through, the, through the, the stretch of Mass Ave that we're, going, that we're proposing to stripe actually within the next few weeks. It's approximately two miles from the Lexington line to um, Mill and Jason Street. Of that two miles, uh, close to one third of it will uh, receive bike lanes under this proposal and the other two-thirds would get a, the shallow treatment. And the reason for the, the, the one treatment of the other essentially is how much width there was to Mass Ave. Could we accommodate a separate bike lane and leave enough room for a, um, a proper travel lane? Uh, and again, that was the, essentially the basic credential for how we chose the striping plan. But essentially from the, the Lexington town line to the bus barn, the MBTA bus barn, uh, we would be proposing the Sharrow markings. And then from the bus barn to essentially uh, the Dunkin' Donuts in the Heights, I think it's Richardson Avenue mm -hmm. there, uh, we're proposing actual separated bicycle lanes. Uh, from that point to uh, Brattle Street would be Sharrows. And then from Brattle Street to uh, essentially Grove Street, we had room for bike lanes. And then Sharrow markings from Grove Street to uh, Jason and Mill Street. And um, again, like I say, we're prepared to create, to start that striping within the next uh, few weeks. The one uh, point I'd like to make is we were, we were very comfortable in assigning this striping plan uh, through this section of the corridor with the exception of um, the stretcher road from Lockland to Mill and Jason. Uh, there's a lot going on there. We have the uh, CVS, the high school, mm -hmm. um, the new Whole Foods, and there's a lot of room there. Uh, there's a lot of cross section to that road, uh, and there are several ways you could treat it, but we, we felt that it would be wise for us to hire a consultant to do some traffic counts and to make some recommendations that we could work with on how that section of road should finally be uh, dealt with. So what we're proposing here is just to basically leave it as it is today, the, the center line as it was uh, before we paved it. We would paint shadows on the side of the road just to, again to bring some sort of accommodation to uh, cyclists. But uh, moving forward we are looking to uh, hire a, a traffic consultant to help us with some recommendations how to finalize the striping for that area. There's a lot of demand for left turn lanes through that section. Um, it's pretty wide uh, so 
we just felt a, a better level of comfort to get some, uh, some outside help. And so you're asking us to just move your seat tonight? Yeah, we're not, what we're proposing will not change any lane configuration or any changes required to the traffic uh, rules and orders. I essentially wanted to um, bring this to the attention of the board. I know uh, it was discussed a year ago and I at that time said that we would go and go through this process and try to come up with some kind of policy guidelines and apply it to Mass Ave and I just wanted to present it to the board. Thank you. I'll move receipt. Move receipt. Second. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Second. Mr. Kara. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you for the presentation and the, and the, and the, uh, the hard work. Um, I, I see in, in what you handed us that there are three different choices on, on the bike lane markings. Is w which one of these? Are you I believe it would be the either the. Um, I believe it's the first one. It's the on, first. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was also wondering. You know, I know that. Well, I guess part of this stretch was just repaved in the last week or two, week Correct. or two. Yeah. So uh, presumably this is part of the overall striping. That, that you'll be doing on the road. We've striped the whole, we're going to stripe this whole section from Lexington to, um, to Mill Street, regardless if it's been recently paved or not. Oh, okay. So yeah. this isn't just going to be bike, bike lanes. You're going to re redo Central all line, of the striping? The, the crosswalks, everything. Okay. The okay. whole stretch will be okay. addressed. Okay, great. Because yeah. I, know, I know that we, there had been, I don't know if it was intentional, but so, there had been some issues with the striping that was done last year with the, some of the work, I think, around Brattle Square to... Um, the stop and shop, it seemed to fade pretty quickly, so. It was, it was, uh, it was paint, and I think it got in late in the year. Um, yeah. Again, what we're going to be putting down now is paint, um, but we will look next spring to, uh, to apply thermoplastic or epoxy at certain locations where uh, it seems to wear f more quickly, especially great. the crosswalks. That's great. Cool. It's great to hear. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. This is behind. Sort of piggybacking on that, definitely have had many conversations, as my colleagues have, here at the selectmen's meeting as well as with the town manager on the thermoplastic treatment. Um, it's sort of my understanding, one of the points I had raised with um, Mr. Chapdelaine Adam was that A, it seems we've adopted the international crosswalk design itself, um, but then just in terms of the Heights project and Highland Ave, I know, um, and I don't know if you want to expound upon that, but I was concerned that we were, we had the interna international design crosswalk out there, but we just had regular paint on high volume usage, and I believe you said that similar to what Mr. Rademacher said. For those, I'm just trying to get a quasi commitment to the Highland Ave because mm -hmm. quite a few parents up by Brackett School and, and residents, not just parents, as well as Paula Marinelli for the Heights, were asking if that could be revisited. So I know, and I'll let Mr. Rademacher correct me if I'm wrong, that DPW receives a list from TAC that they apply thermoplastic. Offhand, I don't know if that particular crosswalk is on the list. If it is, and it wasn't done this year, the intention would be in the spring to go back and do that application, I believe. Correct. You, Highland and Mass Ave, those inter that intersection you're referring to? Um, there's three or four um, crosswalk, Mass Ave and, I want to say, was it Eastern? Was it Mass Ave and Eastern also done over? That whole stretch yes. of the road. Residents well, have asked me about that. So I think what I'm hearing is that I should, through the town manager and the chairman, refer that back to TAC if they think any of the crosswalks on the Highland Ave, unless you already do think, yep. should be treated in the spring, as well as two, three, or all five in the Heights right. should be retreated in the spring. We, we'll coordinate with TAC. We, we have a okay. list uh, that should be thermoplastic based on their recommendations. That'll go back to thermoplastic when this whole, you know, next spring when the road has a chance to um, acclimate. You don't, sometimes you don't want to put it right on right. the fresh asphalt. But uh, we will go back and revisit that list and be sure that those uh, locations are uh, made thermoplastic or epoxy and, and any additional that need to be. Okay, so I know you have the heights. If I can, I'm not gonna think about it again, just put Highland Ave, if appropriate, just because people have asked me. And I just want, since I, you're at the microphone, I wanna take advantage yep. of the opportunity. When we come to new business, um, one of the things that I'm going to, um, actually I'm gonna talk about it now so I don't have to talk about a new business, <laughs> is I know we recently had a resignation on the, uh, for Tree Warden, Tree Warden Committee. Um, I've had conversations with various individuals and I guess what I would do on a new business, what I'm doing now is that I would ask the town manager to um, coordinate with you and talk about that position and talk about whether that needs to be a quarter time, half time mm -hmm. actual position um, where it really is an awful lot of work. And I was looking at, you know, sort of like exit interviews when you see someone leave or whatever, um, you know, why that happened. So I won't bring that up into new business. That would have been one of my... Oh. Mr. Rademacher and I are more than actively engaged in trying to find a solution to that. Oh, 
So, okay, so you like my forward thinking. Then. <laughs> Very forward thinking. All right, all right, I just wanted to put that on the, okay, so that's one less new business, thank you. Uh, my only question is, or it's actually more of a comment, and it's something that I, I suspect you've thought of, but so when you're headed west, um, and you go past Lachlan towards Highland, which is say you've just gone past the high school and you're about to go past the stop and shop. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the turn lanes there, and so a lot of Mass Ave obviously behaves as a two lane road, but there, because the turn lanes, it does not behave as a two lane road. That to me is a, like a particularly tricky location for, because cars are trying to do the merge, mm -hmm. and so I'm, what, I just hope you'll consider that maybe that should be part of the consultant or like because managing that necking down to me is one of those really tricky places. Yeah. La last year we, when we did pave the, the new section of road that was paved, it was the section in front of the high school. So heading westbound, uh, um, there's the left turn to Lachland. Yeah. So we made a left turn only lane mm -hmm. right there. Sure. And that helped channel folks into one lane. So when they got to the stretch of road that you're referring to in front of stop and shop, uh, we had we, we observed less of a, a, a problem. Um, we felt that was a step in the right direction. Obviously, um, if we can find even better improvements, we will do so. Other than that, I, I think it's great. That was my only comment. Mr. Byrne. Um, no, uh, nothing really to add. Just uh, thanks for making our roads even safer, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? Mr. Town Manager, anything? All those in favor of uh, the motion to receive, all, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have a request for a residential handicap parking sign at um, 9 Milton Street. Mahmoud Arshad. Mr. Arshad. Move approval. We have a motion from Mrs. Mahan to move approval. Is there a second. second? We have a second from Mr. Carroll. Any discussion? No, just that I went down and I've reviewed this application and it has very unique circumstances and I certainly can understand why they're asking for it and why there's no objections to it. Yeah, I have no objection either. I just want Mrs. Mo uh, Mrs. Kropalka, when he comes in for the permit, he uh, just remind him still no overnight parking. Mm. Uh, yeah. In that it's not only his. <laughs> That's true. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Approved for zero. Next. Gray Street, Richard Turco, Chair, Transportation Advisory Committee. Our favorite people. <laughs> that means we're going to pass something off to you to do. <laughs> Came very close to it. Good evening. My name is Rich Turco. I'm the co-chair of the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee. Jeff Max Tudis, who's the vice chair, is with me, and Elizabeth Carr Jones. Uh, Elizabeth was the working uh, group leader of the Gray Street Project, and I and Jeff assisted her as a member of that working group. So I thought we thought it made more sense to let Elizabeth make the presentation, and uh, Jeff and I will be available for to answer questions as well. Thank you. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hi there. Um, so tonight we're we have a set of recommendations on uh, Gray Street. Um, like many of the town's urban collectors, Gray Street has, has a fair amount of traffic um, and a fair amount of pedestrian uh, traffic and crossing. So, um, you know, over the years we've heard complaints in two specific areas, um, you know, came to our attention through the safe routes to schools and through the, through the town that um, we thought we should take a look at the entire roadway um, in terms of pedestrian uh, crossing issues and see if we could come up with something that, um, a plan that, that made sense for um, the specific problems. Essentially, um, if you divide the road in half, you look at it on the west side of Highland Ave and the east side of Highland Ave, um, you know, there are two sort of areas where people cross that don't have any crosswalks currently. So um, uh, we looked into several of the streets that are crossing um, gray in those areas. Um, uh, Churchill was a specific request. Um, now the uh, we we did data collection on all of these roads, and the number of pedestrians crossing at Churchill was rather low, not really high enough to warrant a crosswalk. But we did notice that there was a visibility uh, line of sight issue for the cars, um, you know, coming up from. Um, from the east, so going um, away from uh, Pleasant Street. 
going towards Highland. And uh, so if anyone tried to cross there, um, it, you know, very often a car would, wouldn't see them in enough time, you know, given the, the roadway's uh, uh, speed. So uh, our recommendation wasn't to install a crosswalk at that location. However, uh, we saw an opportunity by putting in a, um, a speed advisory sign um, to essentially, you know, reduce the, uh, the, the speed just before the, um, uh, the intersection with Churchill on the approach to that intersection so that uh, people wouldn't come up to that intersection unaware that there were, you know, possibly people trying to cross there. Um, we also looked at Valley Road, which is um, the next intersection up from Churchill. Um, and the reason we looked at that one was that the, um, Bra or excuse me, the Bishop School has a bus stop there. And we checked with, um, with the school department and um, uh, we're considering that as a, as a reasonable location for, uh, for another crosswalk because the, um, instead of the, the, the bus stop, but also um, the visibility there is very good and the, the spacing of the, the crosswalks um, on this urban collector, you know, seem to work out. However, right now, we're not in a situation where uh, many students are using that crosswalk, are using that um, bus stop. So uh, there's, there's no immediate need to put one in, but um, we're working with the schools to um, monitor the use of that bus stop so that if in the future one is, is warranted, uh, we'd be glad to recommend putting one in. On the uh, other side of, uh, on the west side of Gray Street, um, we've got another sort of set of school issues. Uh, the Audison students as well as the, um, the Brackett students tend to walk along Gray Street as well as crossing. Um, so there's a cluster of, um, of crossings in the area of Mount Vernon, Situate and Coolidge Road. Um, we did counts there and observations, and um, it really seems like a great idea to install a crosswalk at Mount Vernon. Um, there are, it's, it's a better location than Situate, uh, which is much closer to the Highland intersection, which is um, traffic controlled with a, with a signal. Um, and Coolidge Road is a, is a private way uh, so it doesn't have crosswalks for people to use on the other side. Um, and uh, so Mount Vernon seemed like a, a, an excellent location. Gets a fair amount of use um, by bracket parents and, and students. Um, it's about equidistance between the other existing crosswalks and the visibility is, is very good. Um, so I think that's the... That's a set of recommendations that, that we're looking at here. Um, glad to answer any questions. So just to recap, you want us to uh, vote to install a crosswalk, a crosswalk on Gray Street at the intersection with Mount Vernon to replace an existing 30 mile speed limit sign with a 25 at Gray Street westbound in advance of Churchill and to take a pass at the moment on the crosswalks at Churchill and Valley. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much for this as always very detailed. Um, are we actually changing the speed limit or are we just recommending that people go a little slower? Um, it, it would be a speed advisory sign. Now there's already one speed advisory sign on Gray Street. It's the 20 mile an hour on the approach to uh, Jason Street. Mm -hmm. um, and a speed advisory is not a, um, it's not a legal speed limit. Um, what it is is, is a way of um, essentially uh, giving people advance warning that there's a reason that they should keep their speed down. See, the, the situation we're in is that the speed limit, even though it's, it's 30 at the intersection of Churchill, um, we're getting speeds that are in excess of that on the roadway. Um, so what we're trying to do is essentially bring, bring the speeds of the, the traveling cars down to the speed limit. Um, and in order to, um, you know, encourage that sort of behavior, um, a uh, speed advisory sign is, is often a good way to do it. A friendly recommendation seems fine to me. Further discussion and a, or a motion? Uh, move approval. Oh. Mr. Yeah, second. Second. 
Any further discussion? Uh, I, I would just say that this, this whole, if I'm not mistaken, this whole issue of, of the speed limit, our hands are tied by the, by the state. And yes. I, I've talked to other um, officials from other communities who have very, been very frustrated by this, who are in similarly dense communities as, as ours, by the inability of uh, local communities to, to make that lower at its certain places. So um, it seems, seems like a creative solution to, uh, to really get the point across. Jeff, you're whispering at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna add, you're absolutely right. The state uh, controls control of uh, two things, absolutely, on all roads, regardless of jurisdiction. Uh, one is uh, truck prohibitions, and the other is speed limit. Yeah. And the only uh, thing that we can do is a, a town, well, you can petition the state, but you may not like the results if you petition mm -hmm. based on speed study, 83rd percentile. Um, but we can, where it's um, warranted, uh, put a speed advisory. In this case, there's a, um, a vertical curve, a crest, which limits the sight distance to about 170 feet. So 170 feet, 25 miles an hour is more appropriate. So we, we can put, as acting as a traffic engineer for the town, a speed advisory plate, but we can't change the, the posted speed line on the entire road. I know it's confusing, but that's the yeah, that's no, what we have to work with. It's crystal clear. <laughs> Mr. Byrne. Um, just one more question. I'm looking at the map on back. Is it going to be a four-way intersection or just across Mount Vern, uh, just across Gray? Or it will go, like, will there be four crosswalks, I guess? Is oh, you're asking, will it be on both sides of yes. Mount Vernon? Um, no, we did not recommend the specific side of, of, um, of the street because... Um, it really could be either side, and mm -hmm. we'd like to leave it to engineering judgment on which, which is better given drainage and, and other issues. Um, so it would be one crosswalk on Gray at Mount Vernon on either the west or the east side of the intersection. Cool. Thank you. I have a question from the audience if you want to come on up. <laughs> yeah. Just introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Sarah Hugenberger. I live at 33 Walnut Street. And um, we've just sort of been in correspondence about the crosswalk at Mount Vernon, and um, Carl Jones suggested that I come and support it. So <laughs> um, I'm a Bracket parent, and I'm a, one of the Safe Routes to School coordinators for Bracket as well. And my extensive email is on page five of that report, if you want to read that. But um, just in sum, there are a number of families from my neighborhood who do a uh, walking school bus and even more families that kind of informally hop on to that walking school bus as we go up and right now when we cross at Mount Vernon we might have a group of 10 people two adults and you know eight to ten kids and cars you know go through like they can't see us um, I understand they don't have a legal obligation to stop for us but it's a little bit amazing how many people don't just want to stop for a group of kids trying to cross the street so we're really looking forward to the idea of a crosswalk there, and we hope that it was approved. And um, it would be the only crosswalk between <coughs> Highland and Quincy that leads to a street that has a sidewalk the whole way up. So that's an issue in the winter um, where there's no sidewalk. People obviously are not shoveling their front lawns out for us, so we're in the street. So this is a great combination of sidewalk the whole way and ideally a crosswalk as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions or comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you. Very helpful. Next up, uh, approval. Dayhill Family Memorial. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on that from the memorial committee? Yep. Come on up. Can you introduce yourself? Hi. I'm Claudia Dayhill Hughes from 20 Webster Street. And this is my uncle, Tom Dayhill from 223 Broadway. Welcome. Thank you. And we request the uh, intersection of Allen and Broadway, the uh, intersection that my great-great-grandfather built a house on that street, uh, be named the Day Hill Corner in uh, recognition of my uncle, my dad, my aunt, my other uncle, and my sons and my cousins who have all been served in the U.S. Uh, services. And uh, be kind of neat if uh, we could name that section of area, Day Hill Corner. Yeah. 
So we received your correspondence. We sent it to the Public Memorials Committee. Um, they gave you a ringing endorsement that they yep. thought it was a very appropriate. Um, so uh, is there a motion Move and comment? Move approval, Mr. Second. Mahan, second by Mr. Carroll. Comments? Um, disclosure, I've known Ms. <laughs> Mrs. Hughes, Claudia, for, for many, many years. Um, I don't know if either one of you just want to speak briefly. I just re was really impressed by you cited many relatives starting from World War II all the way up to, was it Desert Storm or Persian Gulf? Persian Gulf. Actually, Civil War, too. Civil <laughs> War. I just want to give a minute, sort of. We believe that our, um, my great-grandfather served, uh, we hope, served on the Union side of the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story we're sticking That's by. Okay. Right. Uh, but we thank him for having a son who came to Arlington and built a house at 223 Broadway. And his son, his oldest son, oldest child, was my father, Thomas Stahill, who served um, in the First World War uh, as a sergeant major. And uh, in the Second World War, we have a whole slew of people. Uh, my sister Helen, uh, she uh, served uh, in the waves in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, in the hospital, uh, Naval Hospital. Uh, my brother Charlie got in at the last moment, and he was in the Navy, uh, and he actually went overseas. He went to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> we, we chide him about that all the time. Uh, and uh, I spent a little time in the South Pacific as an aerial navigator. Uh, for the 13th Air Force. Uh, and then my youngest brother, finally, he was too young for the Second World War, so he uh, served in the Navy during the, um, the Korean conflict. Uh, and today we are very proud to have my namesake, mm -hmm. Claudia and Tommy, yep. Kenny's son, son Tom. Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there was, there, this is the fourth Thomas <laughs> to serve, mm -hmm. um, uh, in, uh, and he's in the uh, U.S. Marines. Uh, but there are uh, the first Thomas served in the Union, hmm. we hope, <laughs> Army, and uh, then the second Thomas served in the First World War, I served in the second, and now we have another Thomas serving it today. Great. We want to thank you very much for the day of family. I want to thank you, and I just, my dad's bone of contention, he served in the Korean conflict in the DMZ yep. zone, yep. and he told me, he calls it the Korean War because yeah. there were bullets going over. But we know <laughs> it was the war. It, we know but it, it was Korean war. conflict. But I we understand. Call it conflict. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you um, very much. I think it's a wonderful thing that we can honor your family for their service with this. I think I'm delighted to be able to do it. By the way, we had a we had a family get together on Saturday, yeah. and we were shocked and surprised and elated when Claudia presented us with this oh, <laughs> material. They, they were all so. in tears and uh, very happy oh, yeah. that uh, they were recognized. And uh, tell them the story about what your father said about people moving into the house at 223, oh, hanging okay. at the corner. Oh, okay. those are family stories. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's Thanksgiving time. Joe <laughs> said he had told them when they moved in. Don't he didn't expect to see them hanging in the corner, and here we named it. Right <laughs> the street corner. Oh, wow. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, uh, it is 8.55, but we're getting towards the end, so I think we're gonna plow on through. Wow. That'd be great. Next up is the discussion of the board designee for the EPAC and assignment. All four of us, put your finger to your nose. Hmm? Mr. Greeley <laughs> is <laughs> Sec, I make that motion. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Grilly. Adam, would you like to talk us through this well, one? So just very briefly, as the board knows, uh, it set one of its goals to move towards an e-packet for the board's agenda and for the staff. Uh, so I was asking for a designee to work with a member of the IT department, our new systems analyst, as well as a designee from the school committee, so we could devise a system that both uh, the board and the committee could use. Uh, so we'll include staff from the board's office, but we thought it was very important to have someone from the board, and I think Mr. Greeley would be a, a perfect fit for that role. Mm -hmm. So all kidding aside, is that uh, yeah, so moved? Cool. Yes. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? No. Uh, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you for moving forward on that. Thank I'm really you. looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Awesome. Next up, Mrs. Mahan on approval, no parking signs on Boulevard Road and Lafayette Street. Yes, I'd like to move approval. We have received uh, correspondence from Officer Corey Rateau. We have Richard Gove, G-O-V-E, from DCR. Um, the signs have been made. Um, they just need to coordinate with the town, and I've given that information, name, number, contact to the town manager. So I'd, I'd like to, A, make a motion to um, let this particular part of the DCR dilemma down on the Greenway, Greenway commence, and then I would have a, 
an, an additional comment on an additional item. So what's the what's the motion you're making first? Um, the, the motion to, um, as recommended by Officer Rateau, to um, make the following permanent changes to traffic rules and orders, Article 5, Section 2, Schedule 1. And the, he has it outlined in our board information exactly what it is. Uh, Mr. It's Byrne? basically to put the no parking signs back up that were there before the Greenway. Mr. Byrne? I'll second for discussion. Yeah. Um, so I, I do have a couple questions. One, it doesn't really look like Mr. Rateau is endorsing this throughout this uh, statement right here. And when we when you, we spoke about it briefly last week, it sounded like you know there were signs they were taken down. We were simply putting them back up. But now we're getting into what is essentially a bylaw change. Um, and I guess I don't understand. I guess something got lost in translation with that for me between. You know, just signs came down, we're putting them back up, but now we're getting into changing bylaws. And if we are going to start changing bylaws and, you know, making it so people can't park on streets, I think a larger discussion needs to take place because we're going to start hearing from commuters on Mary Street, Margaret Street, Birch, and about how they don't want people parking on their streets either. So I am, a, you know, a little um, concerned about making this bylaw change and um, if, if you'd like to explain maybe something that I'm not understanding here, but otherwise I probably won't be supporting this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, originally the signs were up because there's a mass state law, and if anybody wants to have this meeting tonight about, um, unless voted by the legislature, and I'm sure Mr. Byrne will probably be able to um, cite this better than I, um, having worked at the state house, um, you cannot park on a budding DCR land. Um, unless the legislature votes that you can do that. That's why the signs were originally up. So then when um, we started with the Greenway discussion on Boulevard, Lafayette, and Sunnyside, there were 10 or 12 items that Mr. Greeley and Mr. Chapelain and I met with the then commissioner, DCR, Commissioner Lambert, uh, about getting those signs back up because residents down there, we have no parking on both sides of Herbert Road. We have two hour parking on all the feeder streets down there. And that was becoming an issue, especially in the winter. Um, where it kind of bottlenecks down there. So DCR uh, took them about a year, but they say we have the signs, we're ready to put them back up. And then what happened was, I happened to be in the selectman's office with uh, Officer Rateau, Mrs. Kropalik, on a totally unrelated matter, and he said, I know there's that state law, but to make it um, sort of be in concert with our traffic rules and orders, we should really have it in there too, just to make sure that we're mm. sort of, you know, crossing the T, dotting the I's. So that's sort of the, e the evolution of it. Um, mm. The neighbors were saying, you know, now that those no parking signs didn't go back up, it's really become an issue down there. It's not in concert with other traffic rules and orders in terms of no parking completely on each side of Herbert Road, two hour parking on Magnolia, Fairmont. And the neighbors just said, can you put the signs back up? And Officer Rateau said, why don't we make our traffic rules in order sort of um, piggyback bicycle with the Mass State Law regarding parking um, adjacent to DCR. It used to be MDC, but now DCR land. Mr. Carroll. I mean, I think in principle, I don't have a problem with this, but I wonder if we shouldn't post it as a public hearing just, just to let, let the abutters come in. To, just That's what this, we talked about it the last, and then we said we we're going to post this. Okay. I mean, if, if you all want to do it, I'm just trying to follow up on, you know, what yeah. we got from the residents yeah. down there just to get the signs back up. And Officer Rateau said, you know, we can just, to be sort of uniform, have it on our traffic rules of orders, rules and order. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so when, I'm just curious, uh, so this conversation, do you, Mr. Carrot? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, um, so when the, so the Sunnyside discussions of the DCR stuff started before I was on the board, and you've been a lot more involved with it than I have. Can you just tell me a little bit, like, so I can understand, when, we, when were the um, resident conversations, and what was the context of that about the signs? Mm -hmm. The Greenway project took five years, yep. which was longer than we anticipated. Sure. Um, public hearings, Dan Driscoll from and then MDC, now DCR, even had it here, a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen, several meetings over, the, many meetings over five years. And the culmination of that was last year after the microburst when Mr. Yeah. Greeley and Mr. Rademacher and Wayne Chenard and the town manager met on various issues, including getting reimbursed for the uh, microburst, uh, also brought up the Greenway issues, mm -hmm. the five-year headache from all of the neighbors' residents, Christine Sipiskanski, I'm saying her name wrong, she's on our redevelopment board on Sunnyside, and Richard Becker, and other residents down Boulevard Lafayette. And I have sent to my colleagues through the Selectman's office when the town manager and I and Kevin met with 
various officials at the State House, when we came to the Greenway conversation, there were 10, no, there were 13 items that were listed that we spoke to the commissioner about, and there was an agreement upon moving forward on them. The only one of the 13 to date, I, I know I've been very frustrated, the town manager has, and I know the chairman, by a vote of the board, is crafting and drafting a letter to go to the new DCR commissioner. Of the 13 issues that we had agreement on, one was getting the signs back up from DCR. And so that request correct. came through in various, the hearings front with citizen? Past five years hearings. Okay. I'm, I'm prepared to support the motion. I thought. Yeah. And it was my understanding that DCR actually has and will supply the signs? Yes. I mean, they're just waiting for, I just wanted to have a formal vote. That would, okay. The signs are done. Richard Gove is the engineer from DCR. He's ready to work with whoever Mr. Chapterling designates to get those back up. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry. Oh, nay. Thanks. Nice. Sorry. sorry. Just wanted to be, yeah. Uh, three, one. No. Um, next up, a discussion, long-range planning. So, I, I have been sitting on the long-range planning committee since I came to, since I was uh, put on the board, um, I was appointed by, I guess, Mr. Greeley. Is that right? No, it, was, it must have been Clarissa who appointed me. And, uh, I know periodically I think we've been better and we've been sometimes we've been good and sometimes we haven't been that great at coming back to this board and talking about what we're working on. For instance, when we were talking about voting on an override, we were very good at coming back every time we had a meeting and telling us, I don't think I've come back and given you a formal report in probably a year. So just to, to there were four items that we talked about at the most recent long range planning group. Uh, one was we reviewed the long-range planning projection, which is, of course, the famous five-year sheet that we are all uh, know and love. And we went and the uh, deputy manager took us through the most recent updates to that. I guess I would say on a high level, um, I don't think that this, change, this has changed significantly in the last year. I mean, there have been a number of minor changes, but in the, in the big picture, 2019 is the year that we dip uh, to the negative, um, and I know, and uh, we are. Is it, do you plan on going through this in, in any level of the budget and revenue task? Oh yeah, I'll go. Week? I'll go line by line okay. at budget and revenue. So we're going to go through it in detail. Is there any? Does anyone on the board wish to go through it in detail at this particular meeting, or should we wait until next week? Next week sounds good. I just have one, yeah, one, please. one comment to leave on the table, just yeah. because the town manager was very gracious in sitting with me for about 30, 45 minutes. Um, and this could be part of the presentation. I'm very challenged by graphs and sheets and yeah. accounting and numbers. So one of the things that I had sat so down with the town. Actually, Mrs. Mahan, um, I, I was going to get to the. Oh, uh, we're not yes, discussing I, that. I was discussing starting that. with that oh, first okay. item, okay. if that's OK. Sorry, I'm on open. Yeah. I yeah. apologize. We'll get to open. It just, I, I wasn't nope. clear. Um, my only general comment for the board, and this is something that you know I said at the state of the town, and I've said it. Um, in, in, in various forums since then, and I'm saying the long-term planning, I'm gonna say it again at Budget Revenue Task Force next week, but I literally cannot say it enough, is that uh, 2019 has, uh, a, so we are, uh, as everyone knows, we have a structural deficit, which is to say our expenses grow faster than our revenues, and the last override, plus the GIC, plus a couple other things, including more money from the state, have made it such that plan is gonna last longer than, than we expected. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that by the time you get to 2019, that structural deficit has accumulated to um, a gigantic number. It's short, uh, what is it, seven million or something like that. And I think that we as the only body that can put um, an override question on the ballot are going to be, I think we're good, I strongly suspect that it would be foolish of us to wait until 2019, and I suspect we're going to have to come up with some sort of smart conversation that, um, because if we, if we put a question on the ballot and it fails, which I think would be a completely, you know, that is definitely a possible thing that's out there, it would be a complete train wreck. And if we waited until the last minute and played chicken with our budget. And so I think that we should, we should be thinking about the fact that in some future year, we're going to need to put a question on the ballot such that we can make smart planning without playing chicken um, with our budget. 
So that's why. And in quick question on yes. this, is it inherent by the um, comment on the bottom that when we do have the Budget and Revenue Task Force meeting, will we have any sort of estimates, projected doables no. in terms of Arlington High School no. and or Minuteman Vogue? No. Those, are, not, items not three, three, yeah. Yeah. Those no. are items three and four. Okay. <laughs> I didn't write them down, Mrs. Mahan. Okay. There's absolutely no way that you could know this was entirely in my head. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Item number two, uh, OPEB. Uh, so this was an update on the status of the OPEB, uh, that is the uh, other post-employment benefits. So this is beyond pension in particular, this is the health benefits that we owe our retirees. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I did have a good 30, 45 minute meeting with um, the town manager because I had taken the consultant's report 2011, actually it was proposal in report that presented. And um, there were just two, one of my main operating functions is that because I'm so challenged by different graphs and comp compilation of numbers is one of the rules I was sort of taught if, if you're talking about a large group of people or numbers of people you see the same two numbers match that's something that you should um, kind of look into so I did meet with the town manager and um, he also said he noticed the same thing in terms of having the same number of actives for 1112 as well as the exact same number for n number of retirees for 1111 which are two different different um, subcategory subsets and then the only other thing that uh, but the town manager I think and you can correct me after this that I sort of because um, I try to match the number I take the report and try to match the number to what's before us is the total unfunded liability the 167 454 100 number 167 million was sort of from a proposal and when I looked at the report that we got from the outside consultant group for OPEV the number was 169 488 something but I think I forget what you told me that that's okay that that's a different number so the, the, the number of the liability is from the report that's as of January 1st, 2012, but as of January 1st, 2012, there was only a certain amount of assets accumulated. So what we put into this chart was the actual amount of assets accumulated to date to offset the liability as of 2012, just to give a more accurate picture of what Arlington taxpayers have put aside to offset the OPEB liability. Okay. So I shouldn't worry about the 169 number. That was a projection. The 167 is actual. Well, I will, I'll say it's very, very important in terms of OPED. N none of this, aside from the accumulated assets, is actual. They're all snapshots in time on a, on a very large dynamic projection that has a number of variables in it. So uh, looking at any of these figures like they are an account that says we absolutely owe or we absolutely have would, would be so, uh, too hard and fast an approach. Um, you know, if you did the snapshot a month later or six months later, those numbers would change. And when it's updated again, those numbers will change again. So what I would say is it's, it's fair to say that as of January 1st, 2012, the town's total OPEB liability was $174 million, as is highlighted in red on the sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at what we have today in accumulated assets and earnings on those assets, that $6.6 .6 million figure, mm -hmm. that would bring what are the best number we have for a projected liability down to that $167 million figure. Thank you. I get my comment on that is that having, uh, is that the total unfunded liability number, because when the retirement board asked for that report, uh, it has fluctuated by, you know, t uh, more than $25 million, I think. And it isn't because people are making things up so, so much as the, the tools to provide estimates that are far into the future are really challenging because they involve things like how long are our employees going to live and, and stuff like that. And it's, a, it's, more, it's as much art as science. And so it's, I mean, it's a big number. That's what we need to remember. What the actual number is is going to matter someone else, <laughs> someone else in the future. Um, Thank you. My, so my next two items uh, under long-term planning were we talked about, and I shouldn't say, of course, that uh, Mr. Caro uh, is on, serves on that group as well, uh, was the Minuteman High and the Arlington High School. Minuteman High uh, is, there's been a lot of progress made this summer with a group that uh, Charlie Foskett sits on in terms of coming to the changes, that, the agreement on the changes that we would need in the regional agreement for the town to find things acceptable. And uh, I think I've been pleasantly surprised at how much progress that they've made. And I know that a lot of their work has been backstopped by informal meetings <laughs> of the town managers of the various towns. And so, Adam, did you have anything else you wanted to say about this at this time, or is it best to, or 
I guess I would say very soon there will be a report that will probably be before the board in terms of considering changes to the regional agreement, which as they currently stand do improve Arlington situation specifically in regards to how much capital we'd pay for any new building. Sure. And of course we really believe that there's a large, cap or personally, I really believe there's a large capital need coming at Miniman, but we all know that we think we should pay the fair amount. But yes, that's going to be big and no I don't have a price tag and no I won't um, next week. And as far as the high school, I don't want to speak for the school department yet, but they're definitely, um, they've received a negative report on the high school facility, and they are contemplating doing an appro uh, um, a request of the state to do this, uh, to get into the state, the, uh, the mass building um, program. And uh, we've scheduled another long-term planning committee with nothing else on the agenda except for the, high, the, the Arlington High because we were able to touch everything else, but we just haven't been able to give that the time that it deserves. And so our next meeting, which will be sometime in October, we're going to hear what I would consider, to me, it's like to me the first dry run of this is the case for building uh, high school and this is how I think we should, what we should be uh, looking at. So I would call that very early days, but it's definitely on the committee's radar. And I'm, I'm sure yeah. it already is, but I just want to throw in, uh, besides the actual infrastructure of Arlington High School, right now tentatively, I think in the FY15 budget, there are monies designated but not committed mm -hmm. to also the um, athletic field. Field, correct. Um, I'm assuming that, is that also, that's a separate discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Separate from the yeah. schools. Okay. Yeah, yeah that tends to, that something... That, that's probably that's in the capital committee's range, and it's um, and it would no, that hasn't come across our radar, and I kind of doubt that it would. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kerr. Did I miss anything? Um, no, I, I think you I think you summed it up uh, pretty well. Um, it was something that was tipped my mind, and it's just it's gone. All right. it's gone you away. I think you said I think you summed it. Oh, I, all I was going to say is that I I, I do think that uh, on the, the previous topic. Um, the work that's been done on the regional agreement around Minuteman was the greatest ray of hope I've seen in that conundrum ever. However, the big caveat there was that we're all going to have to push together for uh, state action, legislative action for almost everything that, that's in that uh, draft agreement. That's, that's very, that's an excellent point. Anything else, Mr. Chair? Nope, I, I wouldn't right. add anything else. Um, is it appropriate to move receipt or should we just move on? I can just move, yeah. I'll move receipt. Yeah, second. All right, all those in favor? I'm not going to say. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Aye. All right. <laughs> Next. Check, you, can check so, off, you can check off meeting one of your goals, Mr. Chairman. All right. Oh, that's right. Move checking off goals. <laughs> yeah. Next up, correspondence received. Move receipt. Second. Any further discussion? Or special items for any of these? Um, Mrs. Mahan? I'm assuming on the uh, request on the bike path, is this something we'd refer to you, Mr. Chaplain, or TAC? Um, I suppose we could refer it to both TAC and ABAC. Okay, I'd like to make that motion. And this is the Lake Street bike path? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Any Second. Any further discussion? Um, um, yeah, all I would say, it's kind of tangentially related, but I know that um, this past week, uh, Ms. Sullivan had actually sent us all out a report that was prepared uh, by Arlington and Lexington and Bedford on the Minuteman Bikeway with a, a number of recommendations for improving some of these crossings and, and, and such. So um, I, I, I'm glad to get this, this feedback with this phenomenal report and, and well worth the reading. I confess it's still in my two read pile. I have an open Yeah, yeah, there. well, I, it, it's in my half read pile. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Has a lot of pictures, though. So oh, that's fine. good. All right. Good to know. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then, if I could, um, oh. through the chair, the, the next two pieces of correspondence yep. regarding handicapped parking around mm -hmm. the senior center. I did, when I'm on the list, I don't refer things as my colleagues also, unless they directly ask me to, you know, can you? put this before the Board of Selectmen, which I did. I sent it for correspondence received, but I did have a conversation with the town manager who said, I believe he and the, perhaps the planning director or someone from Council on Aging or Senior. Did you want to speak to that just very well, briefly? Well, so I, I did, I started some conversations, but I think it might be a good idea to formally refer the emails to the Arlington Disabilities Commission, uh, but I'll plan on continuing to follow up. There, there, there's sort of multi answers to the questions they've raised. Um, senior Center, there are spots, they're often taken. 
uh, but in uh, the Broadway Plaza and some other areas, we could we can look at seeing if improvements can be made. So you think Disability Commission is the right place? Um, well, I guess it could be Disabilities Commission or the Parking Subcommittee. Um, ultimate decisions would be made by the Parking Subcommittee and then this board. Yeah. Diane, do you have a preference? The Disability Commission, because we did say that we're going to foster a relationship with them and, when appropriate, ask for their expertise. Okay. So if they can, and then they can report back either through the town manager. Yeah. So we we'll refer to the Disability Commission with a report back to the town manager who will then um, put this before the board to go before the parking subcommittee. Is that what you just said? Well, we, yeah, we'll, we'll see what comes back and maybe we can see what I think we come what right to the board. I'd rather do that. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, okay. yeah. sitting right. on the parking subcommittee, subcommittee, I'd rather not. So thank okay. you. Um, we, so to the parking subcommittee, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And the fourth one, did we take, like, I, I thought we were taking care of all four with the first motion, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Did we receive, shall we move, the fourth one is received. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, um, there is no executive session. We will do new business. Mrs. Kropelka. Adam. I have a few things, so I'll All right. be quick. Uh, this weekend we had a very successful gun buyback program in mm. town. Uh, that was put together with uh, charitable uh, both uh, efforts and contributions from the Trinity Baptist Church, the Calvary Church United Methodist, Park Avenue Congregational, First Parish Unitarian Universalist, obviously the Arlington Police Department, as well as the Middlesex Sheriff's, uh, Sheriff's Office helping out. And they collected over 80 guns. Wow. Uh, wow. Which I frankly was very surprised with that amount, but it seemed to work out <laughs> very well. And I believe three of them were assault weapons. So it was a, it was a, a great success. Mm. Um, also, uh, so the board is aware, uh, the medical marijuana dispensary applications have moved on to phase two. Uh, so the locations that applicants have cited uh, are now public. Uh, so there was 181 initial applicants. That's been uh, narrowed down to 158 applicants for the first 35 licenses. Uh, and at this point, none of those 158 applicants have listed Arlington uh, as their address. So at least for this initial phase, there doesn't appear to be an applicant. Uh, however, as phase two goes forward, some applicants will have an opportunity, depending on how the process goes, to change their location. Um, we're still trying to find out exactly how that will happen, but I wanted the board to know that there's nothing imminent in terms of an application for Arlington. Um, you have an invitation on your desk to uh, an event called Incubation being put on by Arlington's Economic Development Officer and the Planning and Community Development Office. Uh, it's really to start a discussion about shared workspaces in Arlington as a means of economic development in town. So. If you can be there, uh, that's great. If not, I'm happy to update the board on uh, how the event goes. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to give an update on uh, the search for a new town council. Um, we narrowed uh, over 30 resumes down to 10 interviewees. Those first round of interviews uh, were performed last week. Uh, the first round interview panel narrowed that down to four applicants who will be interviewed this Thursday. And uh, from that round, uh, up to three will be referred to me uh, for a hiring decision so I will continue to keep you up to date on that but we have some very good applicants and we're very uh, very excited about the possibilities so of course still sad to, to lose Juliana but looks very positive and uh, that's all I have thank you this is Mahan I already got two of the four the thermoplastic treatment as well as the tree warden I'll wait for some easy. sort of report back from that um, the uh, other thing just to leave through the chair with the town manager, um, the never ending um, GIC comparable stat, uh, salary study committee. I'm really getting anxious. It seems like this is always on, you know, we said to the unions, get real, deal with it. If you want salary increases, you gotta join the GIC. They've done that. Um, I know we have a study committee and I know there was an issue about putting out to bid and who, but um, just kind of, as my father would say, trying to light a fire under, um, I'd like to see that. Some, some sort of report on that or some movement on that? So I can tell you that uh, the initial uh, data that's being collected by the consultant actually came back today. Uh, I did not morning. know that. I'm not asking. Oh, I, I haven't thought. told anybody that. I, okay. I, say, I did not um, know that. So it's, it's, it's initial and um, we, more should be flowing in the next week or two. So there should be something more formal that we'll share with that salary study committee that Mr. Kiro sat on and with the board as a whole. Okay. And, and I only say that because we really came down on the unions that if you want raises and you want your salaries to go up, you've got to buy into this GIC, and, and now that seems to have flickered away. 
The um, other two items were uh, on the Greenway five-year uh, malaise that we have um, down at Sunnyside Boulevard Lafayette. Let me address one facet of it, but there are 12 other points. Um, I've been very frustrated, um, and I believe as a result of the vote that we took at the last selectman's meeting that the town manager and the chairman are drafting a letter to go to Commissioner Murray, as well as once that's done and has gone out, I'm going to wait two, three days, contact the governor again, and just let him know that the person he gave his contact, yes, did call me back, but I'm really doing everything I can because I feel it's the town manager who should be um, working with anyone, whether it's Department of Energy, um, Rick Sullivan, where he is, I'm not going to say his title right, or DCR, and unfortunately have not been able to make that happen, and I've been very frustrated that um, that town manager really has been just sort of stymied and blocked, and it really hasn't, on this one individual project. And then, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that beyond your drafting the letter? Uh, no, I, I am drafting the letter, and I'll say I'm still continually frustrated that maintenance, simple maintenance of the, it's a very nice amenity, but the simple maintenance is being neglected. And, mm -hmm. And then the results. last thing, I would take advantage of the bully pulpit that the Arlington High Spa, Spa Ponder football team, varsity football team, are three and zero. Last year, I think they were three and seven, and the year before, two and eight. Coach Dubinsky, Coach Dubs, and his dad, well-known Everett, Pop Warner coach, who's taken lots of teams to nationals. Um, our last victory, we went to Reading, which is ranked number fourth in the state division. They always go to the Super Bowl. We beat them. 17 to 14, took the lead from the beginning and uh, never looked back. And that, I can tell you there were scouts from, usually when you go to games, as you all know, there's a scout from whatever team you're playing next. We had people there from Lexington, which is this Friday night. We had co uh, co coaches there from Wuven, which is two weeks out. And then we had, I think it was from Belmont. So they're really watching Arlington. So if you want to come down this Friday night, um, down at the high school, 7 o'clock under the lights. I think it's going to be nice weather, too. It's really, I mean, lots of people in not only the division, or the, but also the state are watching Arlington because I think they're going to do really great this year, and that's just a commendation to the coaches and staff as well as the players. It took two, three years to really rebuild, but to beat it, Reading and beat them at home. First time in five years that Reading has not won at home. So wow. go Spy Ponders. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. Just a few things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ms. Kropelka and our staff um, for a very successful uh, town day. It was a wonderful day. Um, and all of the, the other you know, town staff who were involved and uh, community volunteers and businesses, our lead, lead sponsor, Cambridge Savings Bank. Um, it was very well attended and, uh, and a, a great day. Um, we're um, the Tourism and Economic Development Committee, we're moving forward. Uh, well, Mr. Rademach is here. I want to thank, thank him. I know he's been working closely with reps from the committee on the, the uh, information, tourism information booth. Uh, um, I believe that's, that's uh, out to bid now or, or has been actually, it's been received. The, the, the vendor yeah. has been chosen actually. So um, we're moving forward on that um, as well as uh, with some of the designs on the signage that was approved by, by um, town meeting. Um, ATED also provided, and Ms. Kropelka provided some logistical support to the Uncle Sam Committee as well to unveil some of the historical signage, um, again, with Mr. Rademacher's department's help um, at Town Day, um, some of the, the official signage that the town meeting had, had approved. Um, so we, we move forward uh, uh, little by little in, in trying to make some, some um, some leaps forward, and actually, this report that I mentioned, the bicycle, bikeway committee, actually does mention the fact that that Arlington is anticipating this uh, info booth at this this point, and and how that's strategically placed along the bikeway. Um, lastly, I want to mention that um, at the last uh, youth health and safety coalition meeting, um, I, I think we were all informed that uh, that unfortunately this year we did not receive the drug-free communities grant that the coalition has re relied upon. Coalition will be trying for that again next year. We'll see what happens. A lot of that is tied up with what's happening in, in Washington, though. Um, in the interim, some of the work that the coalition has spearheaded, I know, has been um, distributed. The, uh, Adam mentioned the, the gun buyback program the police department did, but the police department has also graciously um, agreed to, to pick up and continue the um, pharmaceutical collection, which um, is done at the police station. Uh, apparently those boxes get incredibly filled very quickly with some really um, nasty stuff that really shouldn't be on, on, on the, the uh, 
the, the streets, and it's been a very successful program. We have a, uh, a local volunteer pharmacist who helps us out with that as well, with the sorting. Um, one other uh, item that was, uh, I guess, covered under the Drug-Free Communities um, grant, though, that is near and dear to us, uh, the alcohol compliance checks were actually funded through that. And so it's my understanding, just from preliminary discussions at the coalition, that uh, I guess there's some discussion about some proposals that may come back before the board as to how we can continue those because they are a pretty vital part of the, mm. the licensing uh, that we do. So I, I thought that you all should be aware of that. I did not know that. <clears throat> no. I didn't either, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. So maybe when we're talking about revising and or drafting Editing our alcohol. Yeah, my understanding is that the director of health and human services is going to be drafting some proposal for us. I Correct guess, is what I yes. understood okay. from yeah. the coalition meetings. No, oh, I hate to see those. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, thanks. I, I I do have a couple things, um, or a few things, I should say. Um, first is that on Saturday night, Joe, Diane, Marie, Adam, and myself attended the retirement party of three firefighters and a dispatcher. Um, it, it really was a great night. They'll be uh, sorely missed, but we wish him the best. Um, two is that I'd like to recognize St. Agnes Elementary School as it's their 125th anniversary this year. Wow. Um, quite an accomplishment. Um, we're, we're working on a proclamation and the wording for that, so you'll be seeing more about it. And um, following up on Joe's comment about town day and town night, um, it, it was a you know, wildly successful and it just keeps growing and growing. And, and I do think it's time for a very frank discussion about the delegation of powers and setting it up. I, uh, I don't think that, I mean, you know, talking to the board staff over, you know, the four or five months leading up to it, they are just swamped. It's essentially another full-time job for every one of them. And, uh, and I do think, I don't think that's incredibly fair and I think it is time that we you know, at least sit down and have a talk about where we think it's going and our vision for it, because uh, throwing it on our staff is not, um, you know, not appropriate in my eyes. And you know, I, I'd be more than happy to volunteer to, um, you know, join. Maybe start. I don't like starting committees, but maybe we do have, you know, one that for a limited amount of time, and at least we can talk about, you know, ways forward in that topic. Um, so, uh, maybe you know, something we can think about and talk about at the next meeting, too. So, um, I, I'm, I know what you mean about the amount of effort. So, is that something that you think we, do you want us to, do you want to do something informal? Do you want us to put something on the next agenda? Um, do you want, what, what do you think? Uh, you know, I, I guess I just wanted to, this, that was more of a conversation setter. Um, I don't think it has to be on the next agenda, perhaps, you know, I'd be willing to volunteer for it, perhaps uh, Adam and maybe someone from the staff and maybe just uh, have an informal conversation about, yeah. you know, get the ins and outs of really what goes into it and then maybe we can form a committee and um, talk about how to move forward in the future years to make sure it, it stays as successful and... Yeah. Can I? Yeah. I, I agree 150% with Mr. Byrne on that. I know. Um, Town Day when it started, back in 1975, Dave McKenna, my mother-in-law and others. It was a purely volunteer committee. And then I sort of backed my way into it and was Town Day co-chair with uh, Susanna Forrester Castillo um, from the, the Jason Russell House, just to s set the framework before it got dumped into the selectman's office. I did it for like 12 years and also worked with um, Nancy and Chuck Pappas from the Chamber of Commerce. So it sort of was a volunteer committee um, I did it for 12 years, and unfortunately what happened was, similar to when I was up at BRAC, a PTO president for five years, I just at some point said I have to walk away from it. And because that hole was left, it fell into um, the, the selectman's office. And I really don't think that's appropriate because it really, as Mr. Burns stated, is a whole job, you know, for the whole year long. So perhaps, in, I, I don't know if we need a motion to recommend Mr. Byrne um, to, uh, Head this, I'd be happy to make that to you know stop this exploratory committee to kind of get it back. And I'm only I'm not trying to toot my horn that I did town day co chair for 12 years, but one of the things we did was um, just to pass on to whoever's going to look at it, Mr. Byrne, Mr. Chapdelaine, and the selectman's office, that there was um, a really big tie with the Chamber of Commerce president and their staff, as well as 
Jason Russell House Historical Society, and maybe we can somehow get those people back involved so that we can at least lessen the onus on the selectman's office. It's never going to totally go away because the checks come through there. That always happens. But um, just, just as a point of fact of history of how it got there. Basically, I just walked away from it. Nobody else stepped up, and unfortunately, you all had to take it over. So I commend Mr. Byrne. I'd like to make that motion that he um, begin that subcommittee to explore this issue. So, uh, do we need a motion to do that or no? Could, um, so I like the idea. Let me talk well, about. Mr. Byrne yeah, wants let, to handle it. Let let me, can can I, talk to the chair. I throw, let's throw out a. Yep. Yeah, because, um, what if um, you and Marie and and, and Adam and Adam Kendra and Carver, yeah. uh, make a recommendation back to uh, say this is what I think. This is cool. how I think the discussion should be structured. And maybe it's creating a committee like that involves like you know some of the sponsors, or maybe mm -hmm. it involves some town employees, or see what you guys think is the best way forward. Like what's the right group of people to both you know, twist some arms and do it and then bring that forward and then we can put a, our stamp on that. Is that, that sounds like something to me. Perfect. We'll call perfect. it a working group. Oh, yes, exactly. Right. Working group, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, anything else, Mr. Brown? No. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, I only have, my only thing that I had was that the, just to point out that if anyone's curious, the Budget and Revenue Task Force We'll be meeting next Monday before the uh, next selectmen's meeting is also Monday. We're meeting at 6 o'clock for the Budget and Revenue Task Force. And um, I know I was, I was talking to some members of the delegation are going to be there. We haven't done one in many months, partly because we do it a lot when things are on fire and things aren't on fire. But I think it's a healthy thing for us to have conversations. If um, members of the committee have items that they'd like on the agenda, it would be very good to get that to uh, us in the next, you know, couple days, so that we can circulate them, so that people can be prepared to talk about them. Uh, I know I want to put Minuteman on there, mm. and uh, I think we should talk about state funding to municipalities just on general principle. So those are the, my two items that I was planning on. And if you have anything else, um, you know, let's talk about it, so we can put it out because I'd like to put out an agenda on Thursday. In fact, I guess we, in fact, we must put out an agenda <laughs> on Thursday, so uh, that's going to be our deadline. Anybody? Yes, Mr. Kiro. I forgot one other piece of new business, Please. and I, I apologize. Um, I, I think since we last met, there have been two events down at Thompson. There's been the, the ribbon cutting for the school itself, but also this, this past Sunday, um, Mr. Chaplain and I were able to attend the uh, dedication of the library to Bill Shea. And uh, I, I just wanted to note that because the Books for Bill Committee raised 100000 dollars and for for books for the for that library and, and i just i think we have to note that because there was a lot of community um outpouring uh yeah. for that effort so I, I'm, I'm sorry to no, it's fine. To, to jump in and forget that his memory is a very powerful motivator indeed can i just ask yes. i don't know if it's appropriate for budget and revenue task force um but i know we've all had this conversation with the many 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 special elections that are costing us seventy two thousand dollars to pop so 72 in October, 72 in December, and conceivably we could have another two after that. I don't know if it's appropriate at the Budget and Revenue Task Force meeting or perhaps a separate, separate meeting or dealing with it a different way in terms of our legislative delegation to somehow try to find a way, just thinking of Arlington, but it would affect other cities and towns, to get, um, you know, we spend 72, we're lucky if we get thirteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 back. And I know, you know, Finance Committee, you know, tries to have us like other departments on the town and school side really stick to our budget, but this cost has really gotten out of hand and it's not a cost we can look away from. So I don't know if it's appropriate to address it. Leave it in the back and you decide okay. to de address it with our legislative delegation at budget and revenue, or we do it a different way, different format. But I okay. did want to get it out there. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank you.